All right, it is Mike. Let's begin with the Lord's Prayer, and we'll go from there. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, we are just getting started. It's about 7 o'clock. And uh, just this weekend, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, me and Liz and Cotton were uh, joined by Greg Morrison in Chicago. And it was a lot of fun. It was uh, uh, quite an exciting event. And, um, you know, assimilation in Chicago was, you know, each of these events was uh, kind of special unto itself for its own reason. Uh, did anybody catch Liz's Periscope? Um, she did a, uh, let me, uh, let me know if you can hear me, by the way, let me make sure it was awesome. Peter said, yep, he, he watched it. All right, great. Um, oh, am I particularly loud right now? Lance? Maybe turn down your volume. I'm not sure, but may, maybe it's in a way that, uh, making it a little more difficult. Uh, 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 is it Helene? Uh, Helen was uh, on, and okay, Joe is on. Great, great, great. Okay, um, so we are set to get started here. Um, Liz just joined us. Are you there, Liz? I am, Mike. I'm here. How are you? Um, I'm great. Uh, we were actually had some fans uh, who saw the, the Periscope. Um, oh, awesome. In Chicago. Yeah, we didn't have very good lighting. <laughs> Yeah, it was it's probably more of a uh, more of a romantic setting that hotel was then. <laughs> then oh yeah, yeah, but we'll definitely have a nice setup for Miami. Oh yeah, we uh we were uh, that that was just a tune-up, um, and so we have uh, uh, for, uh, further stuff to come. But this was uh th this was really an exciting week. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of news um, in the Amazon Facebook group, so we'll certainly get to that. And you also traveled to LA uh, to to wring some more secrets out of some more. Um, YouTube pay per experts, and so there's a whole lot going on. Plus, um, we have a lot more details to share on Liz's and John's mastermind. In fact, let me do this. I'm in the OMG uh, NHB team Facebook group right now, um, so that's mostly where I'll, I'll be doing comments and so forth. So I'll just uh, hit hashtag boom in here, and I'm actually going to edit the post and place the link for Liz's and John's mastermind. It's actually selling out pretty briskly, a um, little bit faster than we'd anticipated. Um, uh, more than half sold out at this point. So yeah, we'll talk more about that. But uh, John came up with a great video uh, that's now posted at the top of this. Really, really enjoyable. And it's exciting. It's actually even more exciting event than I uh, already, uh, you know, I, I learned a lot uh, watching the video myself. Just in mind. Dot PHP. And I'm done editing, and let's uh, also let's give Liz a sticker. Liz has been uh, working super, super, super hard for you. Been uh, uh, very, very awesome. Give uh, Liz a little. Some quite a Chompers needs uh, his own series. So um, so great, Liz. Um, and you you're actually. Um, did just get back from that trip uh, to Los Angeles, and, and obviously there's been a lot of uh, uh, questions and uh, stuff in the Facebook group. Um, uh, ben Brandis started a thread um, to kind of update us something that he wanted us to know about, and you and uh, you did like a lot of research yesterday because it's pretty much when the news is hitting. Do you want to uh, talk about that at all, or, or you know, kind of what the state of things is uh, with Amazon, so as you know it? Yeah, I think it was a little bit of just like a bit of an overreaction. I don't actually think there's anything wrong other than we do already know that the reviews systems are changing. You want to make sure you stay in compliance with that. But one of the things that was uh, brought up is the account that was in question uh, that Ben brought up as well as I, I know Susan mentioned some things in there was actually the same person's account. So in the past... Um, week I've only heard of one person really complaining about their losing their account that is that one particular person um, and I don't I, I actually think this latest Amazon sort of like strike to remove accounts is really targeting people that 
and if you've noticed, just the progression of how they've sort of um, kind of like bend things in a way before beauty and health and, and categories like that were automatically, you were automatically allowed to enter those categories, but now they're requiring approvals. So I think that was really like the first actual strike to cut down on multiple account users. So what they're trying, trying to target is people that are abusing, creating multiple accounts and dominating any one particular niche because in the terms of service, one of the things that they added was the fact that you can only have one account per category. Right. So I think they're really focusing on shutting those people down because they're basically dominating entire niches and making it hard um, for other people to come into the market and sort of share some of it. Because I think Amazon really truly believes in sharing the market so multiple sellers share the actual market as opposed to any one seller that has a ton of accounts selling the same exact product but just branding it under different brand names. And um, so I think, think with that being said, what they're truly targeting is people that open up a brand new account and then just start by giving a mass amount of giveaways like let's say five or six hundred, getting a ton of reviews and catching up with somebody that's been doing this for maybe like a year, a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And then that's what, who they're really targeting because they don't want to see reviews pop up that fast because they're obviously, um, how can I say it, like manipulated. Yeah. Well, one of the things that you've baked into, um, you know, in, in terms of, so, so for, first of all, the, the first piece of news here and, and I, um, everything that I've heard uh, has cor uh, corroborated what, what Liz is saying. Uh, so, so I think Liz is, is dead on when it comes to this. Uh, we also, you know, uh, John Gill chimed in and said the same thing. Um, and so did, uh, I heard from Jack Carvel last night. Um, and so I, I think Liz is, is right, not just about the, um, what we're seeing. So the basic idea is if, let's say Joe Smith, whatever, a random person, Liz opens up, let's say five Amazon accounts in one week and he sells essentially the same product, like let's say a shampoo of some sort, um, you know, again, well, I, I, again, that'd be like maybe, or let, let's make it something a little bit more basic, like um, uh, whatever could be like a iPad accessory or whatever. It doesn't really matter what he's selling, but it's the same thing across all five accounts with, with like negligible differences. And then what he's doing is, is he's just blasting and blasting and blasting reviews to each of those accounts immediately. The accounts aren't seasoned at all. Suddenly he's doing 500 giveaways across, you know, five different accounts all in one week. They, they detect the pattern and they slam the door shut on it. Right. So they want to stop that from happening because in their eyes, it's not fair for him to take over an entire page and hog all the traffic for himself. Whereas, like I said, I think they truly believe in multiple people selling items. They don't just want any one guy to dominate the rankings um, for any particular product. Mm -hmm. And then and it's pretty evident just in their actions and what they've done. Right. I think that's one of the primary people that they're actually targeting. Yeah. And, and, and that's on this late, like latest wave. But again, go ahead. I, I was just going to say again, what people have to understand is the way you, it's kind of like you, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, Mike, but the way that you kind of approach all this is like, you're playing a game. You're, you're playing a game versus your opponent. In this case, your opponent being Amazon, they're going to make adjustments throughout the history of them being Amazon and throughout the history of you being a seller. And you just have to sort of like, come back with a, with a counter strategy. You can't just like freak the hell out yeah. just because they made a change and start screaming the sky's falling and immediately make a change to what you're doing. You sort of have to sit back and watch and see what happens and then continue to move on. But you can't just freak the hell out just because they made one minor change because if you do that, when you usually your first reaction is the worst but possible right. reaction right. because you freak out and you act irrationally. So you sort of have to just like chill out and wait and see what happens because it's going to continue to happen over and over again. If you start do, doing things like that, not only are you going to make irrational decisions, but you're going to stress yourself the hell out and you're going to constantly be so stressed because I can tell you this from experience, they're going to continually keep making changes that they feel like are improving their particular site. So we have to do the same as sellers is continually be thinking ahead and saying, okay, so now Amazon did this. So they're trying to stop me from having multiple accounts. So what do I do to combat that? 
Um, now, Liz, I, I absolutely do agree with you. And, and really, this is the same mentality that makes us so successful in SEO. And, and of course, like being inside of OMG, you know, and especially having, I mean, once again, we see like why it is so awesome to have player coaches that are real coaches. You know, again, a, a coach with a set, you know, step, a step-by-step blueprint could really couldn't react in this situation. But the neat thing about this is that you have enough data to really be able to be confident in your, in your findings here. And, and that's, and that's really um, what we're seeing. Another thing that you're just talking about is psychology to get into this just for a second, um, because this is one of the things that makes you great. Uh, Fletch posted, I think over the weekend, uh, a, um, uh, an excerpt from Jared, uh, from Jared's book from uh, uh, winning the mental game of poker, which Liz is uh, highly featured in. Um, and Jared was um, Liz's like sports psychologist for poker. And it, it was a, a, a great quote. Uh, it doesn't um, really impact on this situation here, but, um, but a lot of uh, what you worked on to really be great at poker and you really carry it over to, um, to Amazon. I want people to be able to borrow from your assumptions because they are really, really good is you, you just, you really don't, um, you're not like looking to panic. You're not looking to make rash decisions, Liz. You're not looking to, to change the game plan or throw out the game plan that the, you know, the first moment that things change. Right. You have to like sit back and sort of watch and wait till it's confirmed that one thing or another is happening. So we, we can confirm that they are removing reviews a little bit more. Um, I guess they're being a little bit more vigilant about removing reviews. Right. So we know that. So now what we have to focus on is focus on the fact that they are doing that. So we have to focus on um, places that we get reviews that are pretty legitimate. We don't want a review club that we've maybe used in the past mm -hmm. and maybe they're not putting that they received in exchange for an unbiased review or something like that. Mm -hmm. Whatever Amazon has in their actual um, terms of service. So we sort of just need to continue doing what we're doing and until we see otherwise. I mean, one account is not enough data to like start freaking out about. Somebody lost an account. We really don't know what other circumstances were involved in that person losing the account other than they gave away 10 items. It, to me, it sounds like there was other activity going on on that account or they had a previous account banned. If you just really think about it, it doesn't make sense that they yeah, give away 10 and Amazon ten items, them. Yeah, 10 items, that's an absurdity. That'd be like a, yeah, that, I mean, they would have to ban tens of thousands of accounts or something like that. Now, right. um, now people clearly, clearly, clearly people who have like, I mean, unless we're, you know, obviously we've been completely right up to this point, which is all that we ever can be. Um, now somehow, uh, Liz, you, you do manage to a little bit see in the future when it comes to Amazon, which, which I really like, but, um, and actually you have in this case, because most people on this call either have established accounts in which case they're fine. They're not a brand new account that they're then, you know, having all this uh, giveaway volume to. So that's number one. Um, and number two, if someone's just getting started, they might say, well, I'm about to start a new account. What about me? I'm nervous. But you really, you've been instructing people, if you're getting started, to start with some retail arbitrage and stuff like that. And that's going to that's gonna chop things up quite a bit where your account is going to have seasoning to it. It's going to have uh, transactions on it, legit, you know, reviews, and you're just a, you're just a, a a normal participation in the Amazon marketplace in such a way where your account looks natural. What they're looking for, just like what Greg Morrison looks for with SEO, is these really unnatural patterns where where they feel like their customers are really getting gained. Right, absolutely. All right, great. Um, all right, well, I, I hope that uh, I hope that clears uh, clears the air a little bit on that, and um, also. Uh, and of course, if people have uh, further questions, they can ask in the question box or uh, uh, jump in the uh, uh, members area. But it, again, it is kind of nice that, that Liz uh, sort of already has pretty much the paces covered on that. Now, Liz, you just got back from Los Angeles and you are doing even more work and looking into um, uh, Amazon pay-per-click videos, uh, uh, even or not Amazon pay per sorry, uh, YouTube pay-per-click um, videos and, and this is something that you've already used to great effect. Uh, obviously we talked, we've talked a, a lot in OMG about Wirecast and last week we started opening up and talking about using, uh, YouTube pay-per-clicks. Um, were there any things that you discovered that kind of raised your eyebrow or that you thought were interesting that you thought that people should know about? 
Yeah, and uh, I just want to say, like, there's a bunch of questions about these reviews, so we'll, we'll get back to them uh, after we talk a little bit about L.A. But I, I can tell you the number one main thing that I found out when I went there, and obviously when I went to VidCon as well, is I'm heavily into the video, um, just video in general. The, the number one thing that I found out, though, just at the past two video uh, conventions is that the way that I set up videos to get traffic to Amazon was completely wrong, but it still worked. Oh, wow. So I think the key thing to actually learn from that is the fact that video is working ridiculously well. So as long as you're using it in your business, it could be in your Amazon business or any other business, you should definitely be using it without question. Um, and right now, because of the cost of video ads in general, there's a really large room for margin of error. So you can completely screw up and still have ridiculous results like I did. And that window is only going to start begin to close within the next year or so. So as of last year, I believe 70, uh, I'm sorry, 86% of ads on YouTube went unsold. Wow. And that's the very reason that we see a lot of times just totally unrelated ads show up when we do a search. And that's because big companies are taking advantage of that. So 86% of traffic is unsold on YouTube. I think within the year you're going to see that number grow smaller and smaller. So expect clicks, cost per clicks to go up and things like that. But still at this very moment it's a huge opportunity to actually jump into them even if you don't know what the hell you're doing, which is exactly what I did not know what I was doing. I just know that video worked well. Uh, with that being said, there's also video remarketing, which is going to be huge because now you're also creating almost like an email list for the people that have watched your videos. So that becomes an opportunity when you have additional products and or services to show the viewers that viewed one of your other videos. Right, right. So, um, and really, uh, you're also pretty much pointing out that people need to be using this. If you're doing SEO client consulting, there's no reason not to use this. If you're... Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can affiliate. literally... And, I can tell people that I've used it for affiliate and SEO client consulting because I, I think I still tell everyone that I still have one client um, <laughs> and they're crushing it. I mean, they're crushing it in, in the city that I'm in. They are just dominating it and are pretty much like, like I haven't locked in at just a rate, but I've told them that I, I'm no longer going to do it and they're like pretty much like willing to throw money at me just yeah. to keep doing it because it's worked so effectively for them. Yeah. So if you're not doing it for client consulting, you're making a huge mistake uh, because it's it's that lucrative in client consulting right now. It, it just, you could put it on your, you could do in-stream ads where you put them on your competitor's video, which is like pretty much game over, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you can do videos where you just have them in display where people actively click through on them. So a lot of different ways that you can actually be doing client consulting with video ads for super cheap and we're talking about pennies yeah yeah I, um, this uh, uh, in the last two weeks I, I, I got around a hundred thousand clicks mostly at one one or two pennies a click um, and it's just it's just nuts I mean it's it, it's, it's uh, really extraordinary so hopefully um, oh and and, and again if, if you're stuck for what to do in terms of your Amazon product really the ideal thing to do would be get a, a, a good video review and use that video review and, and you know, uh, run YouTube pay-per-click traffic to it. Right. Absolutely. YouTube pay-per-click traffic, like I said, is, is absolutely the best. Okay, great. There's no better traffic than YouTube pay-per-click right now. And, and one other thing that I wanted to mention that, because one of the things that we talked about pretty extensively at this uh, video conference was, you know, a lot of these guys are the guys that are making the videos that are just clearly amazing right now. And one of the guys that was there had done the Kobe versus Messi video, which I highly recommend anybody watch. Mm -hmm. It's an excellent video. Mm -hmm. uh, another guy was a guy that actually did the, um, the poopery video, which is an actual physical product. Mm -hmm. And they took that product and turned it into a $20 million a year company. Wow. based off of that one YouTube video That's that crazy. Um, did real well. So one of the main things that these guys were talking about is the fact that um, a lot of people believe that when they see a video, they automatically assume if it has a ton of views, like in the case of the poopery video, 
they assume, or the Kobe versus Messi, they assume that the video went viral right. immediately. But what they don't understand is that behind the scenes, they actually uh, contribute like 40% of the budget was actually dedicated to like YouTube video ads. Yeah. So the way that they create videos is they think, what is my production cost for a video? And whatever that production cost is a video, they plan to spend three times that production cost on video ads just to get it going. So oh. in other words, they're manufacturing viral videos by throwing ads at them. So when we see a video, it's different when we see like a video like the Charlie bit the finger or whatever. I'm, I'm not even sure. Like Sweet yeah. Brown. Yeah. You know, like, Nobody got time for that. I do yeah. know that one. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really yeah. watch that much video. Sure. It's different when you see videos like that, but when you see actual videos that are created by companies for products, a lot of those views are manufactured by advertising. So it's uh, the problem with, uh, with us as sellers is we always assume, oh, the video went viral, when we don't understand that the, the actual viral uh, quality of the video was created by... It was manufactured by these guys with, with video ads. And so they yeah, always start them with video ads. And, and yeah, Liz, what you're saying is so brilliant because, I mean, here we are, you know, like, for example, we, you know, we, we closed out OMG and, and we talked about this uh, a little bit last week. But, you know, we went ahead and, and uh, um, did a close out of OMG and, and Bob Proctor gave us that, that great recommendation. And you know, it has 68,000 views on it but like a lot of those views like probably 40 or 50,000 of those views are um are youtube pay-per-click which i was doing specifically you know, just to get i thought it was a great video i wanted more people to see it um but but it, that really like almost automatically assists your funnel because they're seeing all these views so it, it like makes you seem more established and, and the reason why is people aren't thinking oh those were probably bought with YouTube pay-per-click ads because, you know, how could an end user really even be thinking about that when they encounter it so little? It's not like a normal, it's not a normal thing for the end user. The, and the end user, the person who might, you know, wind up become your, becoming, you know, your visitor and then your customer, um, you know, that person has a certain state of sophistication. For, exa uh, for example, when banner ads first came out and they first started running them on Netscape, people would click on them like 75% of the time. Like what I mean is uh, that if you had a room with a hundred people, you know, surfing the net and they went to Netscape and a banner ad popped up, then 75 out of a hundred of them would click on the banner ad. Nowadays, what would that be, Liz? It would be like, you know, 1% or less. Right. I mean, it just, right. People nowadays have what they call banner blindness because you know, what happened next after that thing with Netscape is basically pretty much you go to every website on the internet, you know, in the late nineties and early two thousands was just, Wall to wall banner ads. I know my, that's what my web websites look like. It was just all all banner ads and stuff. Um, right, and it, it kind of scares us because we see these videos or we see our competitor maybe doing this, and we're like, wow, they've got a hundred thousand views. There's no sense in me doing it. Oh, I yeah. can never create a video that's that good when we don't realize that like they manufactured a lot of those views, and we can very well catch up with them or come out with a video that can get an equal amount of views just by knowing how to do video ads properly. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is that when we have, uh, you know, let's say you have a potential prospect who's, um, you know, uh, let's say for a pet product or something like that for dogs, and, you know, you target them on Facebook and they come to your video and, you know, uh, it's a review for your, um, let's say, dog shampoo or whatever. Um, and they watch the review video and they look and they're like, Oh my gosh, this review video has like 25,000 views on it. Right. I mean, what are they thinking? They're like, because they've never, my, my point of explaining about the banner ads is they've never seen this advertising tactic. Not really, not enough that they're like um, numb to it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I, I think it's just something that, if you start doing it, you'll realize the potential again, not only for your physical products. People, a lot of people say, how, how is it? How can you do it well for physical products? I encourage everybody to look at the poopery video. I think their whole funnel is still on that video, yeah. So they can see exactly how they go about doing it. Um, but with that being said, it also brings up the there's there's so many different tactics that you can use with videos. Again, we've briefly touched upon partnering with people that already have 
a pretty good following and yep. we don't necessarily want to partner with people that have these gigantic followings because they're going to be represented by agencies yeah. but there's a lot of people that are in the middle that are selling the crap out of stuff in fact one of the uh, people that were actually there that really impressed me the most were these two twins that have two channels um, one of them was the cute girl hairstyles mm -hmm. and the other one was it's called Brooklyn and Bailey which I think is their name yeah. and what wound up happening is on the cute girl ha hairstyles what they actually did at one point is a physical product company approached them about partnering with them on a mermaid tail it's oh like you some told kind me of, about this one yeah this is yeah. awesome so they approached them about partnering with them on the mermaid tail and basically they gave them two options they said look we can give you a lump sum payment if you can demonstrate our product on a video and, and show people how you like it and or number two you can actually um, take a percentage of the, the total company mm -hmm. so for some reason or another they decided to go with the lump sum and what wound up happening is that company went from really not making a lot of money to becoming a thirty million dollar a year company Wow! just based off of the video which which uh, they were able to make go viral um, because that channel had so much popularity so yeah. again partnering with people is always an option you might even just have a friend that has even 30,000 followers and that's plenty to just sort of try to get a product off the ground up and running mm -hmm. yeah and 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 it, it's also what you're showing is really demonstrating again and again you're you're kind of turning the coin over in a number, number of different ways and really showing people uh, a great thing about that example is you know what's what does that example have in common with everything we've been talking about in this segment about YouTube pay-per-click ads as well it's YouTube it has YouTube in common you know it, it's a YouTube phenomenon and like that, that, that a thirty million dollar product can get you know made off of um, YouTube videos like that is really is really it just goes to show it's a very uh, a very very powerful thing and and uh, so it you know, definitely worth right. Go ahead. And so I probably encourage everybody to I haven't even actually looked at the video but look at the video and I'm pretty sure you might be able to see where the traffic was being directed or what pretty sure they still have it in place so you can see how it got that popular and how they were able to push it because if they paid them a lump sum what I'm assuming is they made a video and then put a link somehow in that video yeah yeah exactly okay um, all right well let's uh, let's get back to those questions uh, about the uh, the recent Amazon update which which did you want to begin with Liz um, yeah that, that's fine let me, let me see that I can open it up here and look at the questions Um, how can Amazon tell if these people with multiple accounts and brands are the same people? Um, that's a good question. I don't think that they can if you're doing it properly, but I think that they're just creating, um, making it harder and harder for that to happen. I mean, it all started with multiple, um, I mean, eliminating certain categories were automatically approval when you open an account. Like now we have to get category approval for beauty, health, um, grocery, I'm trying to think what other have recently shoes. become gated. Shoes, candy. Well, shoes have always actually been gated. Oh, really? There's what, certain, what certain categories that have always been gated, like jewelry, uh, shoes, watches, luggage. Um, trying to think off the top of my head what else. I think those are the main ones, a scientific and industrial, ones like that. But now beauty health grocery um, and certain categories they've now started to gate I mean I, I don't think you can any longer send DVDs right but so I think that was the initial step that they took they started by doing that and now what they're doing is sort of like Jack talked about is if you start a brand new account and you start giving away a ridiculous amount and you're not equaling the sales volume at some point like they're gonna give you a, a certain period of time they're just gonna suspend you um, on that note, one other interesting thing that I did find from a friend of mine who's been suspended too many times to actually tell everyone. Um, <laughs> he mentioned every single time he received an account suspension, he was warned. So what that tells me is that when somebody gets their account shut down immediately, there's something else going on other than right. just that. So he's been warned every single time before he got his account shut down right and uh, I believe his um, actual email said 
that on multiple occasions he was manipulating reviews right. each time that he was shut down. So if you get that email, that tells me that you're probably going to have to start selling more organically before you give out anything. Right. Which, which, and again, you, you've really, you've really baked that into how people are pursuing OMG. If they're just getting started, they already have, you know, their Amazon arbitrage kind of built up before they, you know, and that's one of the great things is while other people are just sitting around waiting on their first product to come in, you're doing arbitrage, you're building up, you're seasoning your account. And that's going to create a buffer that's going to give you so much more um, leeway with, with, you know, any sort of a review situation or whatever. And it's going to give you more experience as to what natural looks like and what natural is because you're experiencing a, a natural business flow. So, you know, it's either that way or it's somebody who's already been in the game for a little while, uh, in which case their account is already seasoned. Now, as far as how, uh, how can Amazon can tell across the account, uh, if they're the same people, um, this is a lot like um, like an SEO footprint, isn't it, Liz? Where, where ultimately, for example, um, uh, several of my sites got hit about about a year ago, and, but it was just because um, Greg had a few um, sites just basically sitting on the same SEO hosting server, and that was it. It just it was enough that several, you know, it just kind of created a pattern um, at, the, at the server level, and it's one of the reasons why we're so careful with with our SEO about you know just really having our servers spread out and and uh, you know. Um, that, that kind of thing. But anyways, you can get that in your SEO training. The, the, but that would be the sort of thing they'd be looking for, like, you know, logging in with the same IP or maybe they notice a pattern, like you were saying um, the, uh, yesterday to me when we were researching this. If, like, everything in your account's all the same, you know, the product's the same, the reviewers that you're getting are the same, the, you know, the just the way everything happens on your account's the same, it's very possible for them th that they could pick up on that in an automated way. Right, so you need to really like be careful and make sure you're opening it with a different IP, with different VPS. In fact, I know some people that do it in, even entirely with a brand new computer. They don't even trust getting on the same computer. Right. So um, you really have to take like a great amount of care of how you do it and try not to. If you got suspended just for no reason, again, uh, a good friend of mine who has eight accounts right now and has had over 12 accounts suspended um, said he got a warning on every single account he was suspended on. Yeah, yeah, which is great so, data. Right, that is great data. Just knowing that alone means if you get an email warning you about something, consider it a warning and they will shut down your account. So, like, it doesn't make sense that they just shut it down automatically unless they've warned you at some point or you're violating the rules by finding, by using p review clubs where they really abuse the review system. All right, great. Um, Helen said this. Let's see. Um, I spoke to Seller Central Support, and they said regarding that, that there is no limit. You can give away as many free items as you want as long as you must clearly state that, uh, uh, that you welcome both positive and negative feedback. Um, and, of course, right. they have to say that, that, it, uh, that, it, was a, uh, that it was a giveaway. Um, yeah, I got I, I to gotta agree with that based off of the conversation I just had with this friend of mine. And also um, a, a big review club that um, that that the guy sticks to the guidelines and talks to Amazon pretty regularly. So based off of the info that I got from them, like I said, I really think that it's like a sky's falling mentality. Until we see uh, another couple people or a handful of people start complaining that they got their sh account shut down in one week, I don't think it's anything to like panic about. Great. All right. Th this is a question that, that I'll have uh, kind of a um, – I should be able to answer this. All right. Should, should I direct my new knowledge of SEO, uh, OMG 7A Newbie, directly to the Amazon page, or should I focus on improving the SEO of my website, which I track to the Amazon listing? Uh, b basically, s definitely start with the web um, – you know, with, the, with your website. There's not really too much danger in directing SEO traffic at your Amazon listing. Typically, the worst thing that will happen – is they'll, they'll change your uh, your URL, which somewhat makes you kind of start your SEO over. Um, but uh, but actually, Greg Greg was talking to me and Liz in Vegas or not in Vegas, God, Liz. Chicago. It's such a. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought it was Vegas for a second. <laughs> okay, 
Um, but uh, Greg has uh, actually got some pretty some pretty nifty updates to come for us shortly uh, on Amazon uh, on ranking those Amazon pages. But yeah, I mean, you really want to turn loose. That, that's why we were talking about the YouTube pay per click. Um, you, you can really just directly take your your 2015 over the shoulder series that's right there in your members area um, with Greg and Joe Marfolio and just do the same thing to your, your Amazon listing, right? So instead, of course, for Iowa City SEO, you can rank you know, the website, the YouTube video, you can uh, you know, make a Facebook page and rank the Facebook page. You can do something like a Weebly is a great, uh, a great choice for another Web 2.0 property to, to rank for it. And they'll all, they'll all help your website rank, they'll help your video rank. And you might, you might uh, definitely, especially for some long tail keywords, you'll definitely get some page one domination going where you're really able to, to pick up some, some, nice, uh, some nice views. The, the biggest thing I would say with, with your SEO is to think, um, definitely think in terms of buyer keywords. Um, I would review, let me see, let me take you into your members area for a second here. I would, I would definitely especially look, I'm gonna show you a couple videos to look at here. And these are gonna be really helpful actually. So I'm, glad, I'm really glad you brought that question up. That was an excellent question. So in your, um, okay. So first of all, in your on-page SEO area, which is right here, then there's this great video series with, um, this is with Tim Schmidt and Greg Morrison's partner, Martin Lotzberg. And it's gonna really teach you both a lot about on-page SEO and, and a lot about how keywords work. And a lot of people don't know this. It's really, really great to know. Um, so I would have a look at that. And he's doing affiliate marketing, but what he's selling are pro the kinds of products that you'd be selling on Amazon, for example. Um, so it's, it's really, it's kind of a direct one-to-one, -one, uh, very, very useful kind of thing. But you can also go into um, this area with Alex Gould here. So for in the affiliate site monetization area, this keyword research, um, with Alex Gould actually once again, and Alex is selling a lot of the kinds of things that you'd be selling on Amazon. He's selling like a lot of supplements and health products and stuff like that and uh, all kinds of different stuff. And um, so what you can learn from these affiliate keyword research videos, Alex is uh, um, an OMG super affiliate. He's probably making around you know, $40,000 a month with his affiliate stuff. So he's really knowledgeable. And so I, I just want your, your, um, your efforts with your SEO to go further. Uh, so the better you're targeting, you know, on your Google keywords, the geo, you know, just the more sales you're going to get from those, uh, from those rankings. Okay. Um, all right. Let's get back to question box here. Liz, did you, did you have any comments on that one? Um, no, I, I really haven't done any SEO on a, a lot. Of, I, I've done it, but I've done it wrong. Again, like I said, I think the key thing is that like I do a lot of things. Yeah. And I figure it out along the way, and sometimes they don't work. But I think the key is that I take action pretty regularly. You know, um, coming back to something that Liz said earlier, because it, it was so right, and I, I, I probably should have brought more emphasis to it. When, when Liz is saying that that she was doing it all wrong, but she, it was still so effective, what she's really saying is that she had already won by context. So she had so many advantages. She, you have such an overwhelming advantage because you're using this marketing medium that is just, just no one else is using and yet it's literally so powerful that, that that's one of those sweet spot situations where somebody, right. where you can really make a mint. Right. It's kind of like just the exa same example for the people that joined us a little bit late, like using the Periscope for coming live from uh, assimilation. Yeah. We did it. It was done so wrong and so poorly yeah. based on the fact that the lighting was awful and everything. But I mean, the fact remains that I think we did it and I don't think anybody in internet marketing has done that yet. So the fact that we did it, and if we continue to do it, it's going to get better and better every time. Oh, yeah. And pretty soon people will begin to notice. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of like exciting because you can actually experience what's going on there without actually being there. So, again, it was done so imperfectly, but the fact remains that it was done, which a lot of people sit around thinking, oh, I want to do this, and I'm, I want to try that for my business, and I want to try this. But they never do it because they're afraid or they're afraid like what people might think. Yeah, and, and I also want to give a sense uh, to you, um, to our audience, 
you know, what it's what, just what it's like working with Liz because she's so terrific. Because we were in Los Angeles um, for uh, for Assimilation LA with with Bob Proctor, um, and uh, for, you know, and for the ABCs of event that it was kind of running together. And uh, me and Liz took a uh, a day with with Jin Chan, who's uh, who's known Jerry. I'm with uh, I think Elena joined us later. I don't remember if she was there. No, I don't think she was there with us early. But anyways, me and Liz took a day with with Jin, and she was. Uh, driving us around. And one of the places we went to was to a, a mastermind that, that uh, Kevin Jin set up with, with some friends in Los Angeles, a few, uh, uh, um, couple of them years there. And, um, and somebody brought up the Periscope uh, app at that event and explained it to you, Liz, and you just kind of almost latched onto it right then and there. And then, you know, it kind of like percolated in your mind a little bit. And then you messaged me this weekend. You're like, let's let's do it. And, and we didn't know how to do it. I was trying to explain it in the news. And I had to actually meet you in the hotel so you could kind of show me what it looked like because we were both pretty much confused about how it even worked. But then... Yeah, and actually what people don't know is... That, what people don't know is that I actually... I think Susan... Well, Susan was helping me all day try to get it down because it was that confusing to us because it was something we had never used. So right. we were messing around with it pretty much the whole morning right. for at least four hours or so. And again, like I said, that's usually how it goes when you start something new that you don't know. You spend a bunch of time trying to figure it out only to sort of like finish off frustrated. Yeah. But if you keep going at it, you should – I mean at some point you'll become an expert as long as you keep doing it. But it really was like sort of frustrating and then it was just like we had no selfie stick. Um, we had no lighting, we had no mic, we had no anything, but, you know, just doing it felt like a sense of accomplishment so that now, next time it gives me more um, confidence going into the next Periscope. Yeah. And then, who knows, maybe I'll do like a daily Amazon Periscope with tips or something like that sometime in the future once I yeah. get the hang of it. No, there's this. It was there's actually a lot of fun, but it was at yeah. the same time. Go ahead. Well, I'm sorry, what were you saying, Mike? Oh, no, go ahead, please. Uh, I was just going to say, I, at some point, it was kind of exhausting because I had done the practice run, which went really bad. And we were on for about 30 minutes, and then we did a second one, which was another, like, 35 minutes, and it was sort of, like, just exhausting having to talk that long about just things in general, like SEO and Amazon. It was almost sort of, like, exhausting. Right. I, I think I was – I think you even were like, what the hell's wrong with you today? Like, I just wasn't myself after that because I was literally exhausted from it. It, re it really drained you. But what was, what's fascinating about it is th that's like you were like people talk sometimes when they get inside of OMG and they say I'm overwhelmed. But overwhelm is sort of like soaps and the uh, soap suds and soap. Like the way that you know that soap is working is the suds, and the overwhelm is the way that you know that you're learning. You know that that's like the feeling. Like it's like when you know I worked out this morning and my legs are sore. But that's not like it doesn't make me want to go to the doctor, right? I'm not like doctor, my legs so hard. right, right, because that that's the feeling of you know of my muscles you know tearing and and, and whatever and, and stretching and and you know, doing all those good things I want them to do to become stronger. And so in the same way, like you really push yourself, and it was it was big because um, you showed it to me. I was on camera for a few seconds, so I got to interact with it and experience it a little bit. And then the funny thing was. I, um, I was talking to another OMG. I was just getting an earnings report from somebody who's making, um, it was a, a really nifty earnings report to come. And so I was on the other side of the room from you and someone was like watching you on their phone on the other side of the room. I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm watching the, per I'm watching the Periscope. And Liz, <laughs> it was really cool. And I actually even typed in hashtag boom on his phone to put to add a little uh, oomph to things. But I saw all the hearts and stuff, and so I got to experience it. See, the, the, there's all these ripple effects, right? The fact that Liz did the Periscope, then you know it also had a ripple effect. I saw it. I experienced it. I interacted with it a little bit. Same for Cotton. Same for Greg Morrison. Same for people at the event, and and you know, and then OMGers find out a little bit more. And who knows? I mean, like you said, maybe maybe there's just going to be Periscoping, you know, right and left. I did the same thing with Google Hangouts with with our. Um, with both our training for OMG and, and also to market OMG. And I just think it's refreshing. I like the Hangouts a lot. You know, that, that one we did with Bob Proctor, do you remember that one? That was sick when everyone was on. Oh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. Uh, 
you know, but if we hadn't started doing hangouts and, and a webinar, that just wouldn't have been the same thing with Bob just sitting there in a room with us. That was the first time that Bob said his, that OMG is his number one all-time recommendation. I mean, I wanted, I mean, that was very emotional for me. I just don't know if that would happen on a webinar. So my point is we want to try these new technologies. And by the way, webinars are, were a new technology too. So one of the neat things about Amazon though, the reason this is so relevant to Amazon is that Amazon is such a great target for all these different tactics to throw at them, right? Like that we can use our SEO to rank our Amazon pages number one. And just so you guys know, I mean, Greg's ranked some, some pretty crazy stuff uh, in the last few weeks. So it's going to be really exciting for you to find out more about that. But, you know, but, but using YouTube pay-per-clicks like, like Liz is using, using Wirecast, which helps your, your Google SEO, your, your, um, your, Google, uh, your YouTube pay-per-click traffic is actually going to help your, uh, your SEO rankings for your, um, for your YouTube videos as well. So, so you're just hitting it from so many different angles. And of course, like we said, you can use that 2015 over the shoulder series. So you can rank a blog, you can rank a, a Weebly page, you can rank uh, you know, a Facebook page and, and, uh, and so on. And, you know, of course, rank the, the YouTube video. So you're just kind of hitting it from all these different angles and, um, you know, and, and then that's you know, generally how to make a lot of money pretty much, you know, you, you, you generally, you know, kind of come into certain strategies and, and we're still doing some of these uh, other tactics. Of course, you know, we're, uh, giveaways are very important in what we're doing and, and Liz is just giving you incredible direction on how to use them. Um, so it's quite, uh, quite fantastic there. Yeah, I actually think my favorite a moment from the Periscope was when somebody was was when uh, Greg was on, <laughs> and Greg was on the Periscope, and there was a bunch of OMGers on there. You could tell they were OMGers because they were like, "Wow, Greg is so ripped!" Oh like, I guess yeah. I never realized because Greg is always from like the you only see him on the OMG event from the head Listen, up, I, and then we had a bunch of people saying, "Wow." Greg is so handsome, and I was telling him this thing, and he thought I was just making it up. No. <laughs> I had to turn around the periscope and show it to Greg. It's crazy. He thought I was making that up. I got the I got this diet from Greg. He looks so great. I mean, Greg always looks great. Just so you guys know, like anything that Greg does, they really focuses on. He just really, really nails it. Something. I'm gonna see if I can find this to show you. I started it today. Um, may I don't know. May take me a may take me a little while to get it down, but. Yeah, here it is. Can't seem to can't seem to click on it. So, oh, here it is. It's crazy. This is what the kind of stuff that Greg. But Greg just has has filtered through diet after diet after diet because he's so scientific and he tests everything, even his diet. <laughs> and he's just gotten incredibly ripped. So this is what he's doing. Like this is your weight training on a day when you're training after two meals. This is if you're training after one meal. This is if you do your training before you eat, and it just tells you exactly what to eat like um it's all color coded and, but this is what it's like working with greg like greg figures these systems out for even even for being uh, uh even systems for being ripped uh like liz is saying but yeah um sorry let's go ahead no no i'll just that, that's all i really wanted to, to um drive the, the point across the fact that it was like just completely we had no idea what the heck we were doing and even like Greg getting recorded, he totally thought like, oh, you're just making that crap up, Liz. Oh, stop, so stop. He, he literally said like on camera, oh, now I know you're just bull <gasps> is what he said. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We, uh, we we do have a lot of fun, guys, uh, just, so, uh, just so everybody knows. Um, okay, let's see. We got another uh, question here. Okay, yeah, this is the one that we had. So that, that's a question about footprint. Um so let's see. This is coming from Stephen. Liz. Stephen wants to know: Are 99% promotions effective, and would it cost uh, would it cost money to give the product away at price for Amazon to pick up to pick and ship? Not um, sure. Yeah, it's going to cost you. They're they're very effective, and it costs you a dollar to run the promotion, as well as you're going to pay the shipping on it, and then your costs of the actual product. So yeah, it's it's like considered an investment in order to earn rank. All right, awesome. This is a uh, this is a great uh, great question. I, I actually, Ted, thanks for bringing this up. I almost forgot to bring it up today. Um, this is a little bit of economic theory. Hi there. Any thoughts about what's going on with the economy in China? Seems like things are unstable at the moment. Do you think it will have any effect on sourcing products from China, or am I overthinking this? 
Um, no, I don't. I don't think he is overthinking it at all. I think it, I've already heard of people actually. I think OMG is, I think Bittler is the one that told me that he already got a 6% increase on some of his products, I yeah. believe he said. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's on the call. Yeah, he could probably come on and talk about that. Oh, but I think we're going to see it slowly start to come up. Prices start to come up. At the same time, as a result of that, obviously prices in the United States will go up as well with it. Right. This is, um, infl so, this is inflation. That, that, and, and that's kind right. of what I was going to say is that uh, as a product creator, you generally pass on your cost to your customer. Um, of course, there are times when you can't, and then of course, there that's where you're like losing profit percentage. But for the for the most part, you're you're really looking to pass that on. Is it, is that your experience, Liz? Yeah, it's going to get passed on, and you're going to see it. It's going to become quite common for like everybody who's getting it from China, which is just about everyone. Uh, yeah. They're going to pass it on. If they aren't already getting it from China, then they're going to have a little bit more premium pricing because things like that are in Korea or another country are a lot higher priced already to begin with. Uh, just like Korean batteries on um, lipstick, cell phone chargers, and things like that are more expensive than Chinese ones because they're yeah. higher quality. They work better, but at the same time, they cost usually, uh, depending on the size of the, of the actual charger itself, they cost a lot more. So. Right what you'll see is a steady increase just across the board. So I think it's not really anything to be worried about. It just means that your cost is going to have to go up and your price will have to go up as a result. So everybody's yeah. going to start doing it and it's, I don't think it's overthinking it, but it's just, you have to sort of be aware of it. Yeah. And, and the reason I pulled up Drudge Report today, most of the day it's been talking about uh, the second 500 point drop in the uh, Dow industrial average. In, in two uh, in two days because it, it fell 530 I think on on Friday and then it fell 500 some odd more today and so this is kind of what all, a lot of the headlines are about um, uh, great fall of China these are some of the headlines on Drudge Report great falls of China Black Monday risky new financial crisis Evans Pritchard market leans tur uh, turns dangerous uh, sorry market Leninism, sorry, uh, turns dangerous for world. Uh, Beijing censoring financial chaos on the web. Um, so, anyways, those are a lot of the headlines today that uh, that, that are being pulled. And um, what what this looks like very possibly is inflation. But the thing is, you may not want, as just a normal ordinary person, you may not want inflation, of course. Um, you know, because then you, your dollar just has less buying power. But that's kind of it's. It's just kind of universal, like Liz is saying. So if the prices just go up, you know, like um, the, you know, if the prices go up, prices go up, you tend to pass them on to your customer where you can. Um, now, th there are some other things that we saw, like Liz, like what you're saying, prices are going up. But we're also seeing much more modern um, and, and uh, high quality factories in Japan, though, like the one that you and I visited. And we, and we put um, actually I didn't put any video of it in the uh in the China documentary series, I may I may circle around still and do that. But we, um, you and I, uh, took a whole group uh, of OMGers into a uh, a really nice factory in um, in China, and it was we, we went to actually to two factories. One was like you know clean and nice, but it was nothing special. But the second one was just really high tech. It was really clean, really uh, I mean just high tech. It was you know very nice. It was very beautiful. Uh, we, you know we went to the um, you know, their um, business center was like really modern and nice and, and very professional. Um, so one of the things, one of the trends out there is that you will start having um, more like really high tech and high quality uh, factories to choose from in China. That, that is an emerging trend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but again, I think the, the key thing is really like, don't be worried about it. It's, it's going to be something that we, it's sort of like we've seen it coming a, a while. I think, do you remember, Mike? I think it was Jin that mentioned that originally, like this was maybe about maybe six months ago, she talked about how the fact that it was already sort of like China already like foresaw it happening because mm -hmm. of the fact that all their the children within China or the people that typically become factory workers yeah, they don't were work. instead wanting, yeah, they don't want to work for the factory anymore. So they're, yeah. in fact, becoming like exchange students or in the United States. Or taxi drivers or whatever. I mean, they're just getting very, very different jobs, right, than, than they were before. Yeah, and as a result, they've had to start um, heavily recruiting people to work in their factories. So 
it looks like wages might actually have to go up and things like that in order to get people good like dependable people to work in those factories so it was already something that we sort of like foresaw and again this is kind of like the importance of being able to have a really nice like networking like a strong net group of, of people that are networking together because they're incredibly smart people that are experts in one particular thing or another and it just happens that like Jin is like sort of like an expert at just like the logistics behind like selling she she always oh, yeah. talks she's about she doesn't get the marketing so, stuff so well but when it comes to creating systems and processes and things like that an organization like she's probably one of the best yeah and we um th you know that's one of the bonuses and it's a great time for us to talk about it right now um you know, now we talked about two, you know, big changes. So uh, there's probably a lot of Amazoners, and this is one of the nice things about having a home base with OMG and, and you know, being a part of this winning team environment with all these A-type players, Liz and, and John Gill and, and uh, so, so forth, everybody who's involved, Bittler and Kevin and Jen and, and everyone who's around is awesome. But, um, you know, you really have somebody to help, you know, guide you through those forks in the road, and it's a big deal. We have two big forks, forks in the road today. Um, whether now, now, by the way, notice this. If the question is whether or not to panic about something, always don't panic. Okay, for sure. <laughs> like, you know, step one, panic, run around in circles and feel bad for, you know, several hours. Step two, start working on the problem. You know, of course, we would never, like, if we were trying to plan ahead of time how we were going to deal with a potential crisis, we would certainly never apportion part of our plan for running in circles and, and being upset, right? Um, even though, and don't get me wrong, it, it, it can feel upsetting. We, we understand that. You know, uh, we're, we're addressing it respectfully. I, I know, you know this is something that people are taking very seriously. We want you to take it seriously. We want you to crush it on Amazon. But at the same time, and, and I'm, I'm not sticking to anybody in particular. I, I don't believe uh, you know, we just have a lot of people on. So most certainly there's at least one or two people on who at least felt like a little bit unsettled by some of this stuff or at least felt, you know, uh, you know a little sense of concern. Um, and it's understandable. But um, but really, you know, when these forks in the road come up, it's really great to have. I mean, you know, for example, we, you know, we've got Liz and now we've got John, who's uh, just jumped on this webinar today. Uh, John, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Hey, John, we're so excited to have you jump on. I, I know you had uh, another commitment that you had to wrap up. But uh, w would everybody uh, uh, please uh, welcome John? I, I know I've kind of gotten off the uh, OMG and HB team Facebook thread. Let's jump back in here and uh, say, hey, John Gill. If we can, uh, Hi, back at you. All right. Um, so, uh, so great to have you. And, and John, we've we've been uh, we've been talking about um, we we've been talking about, you know, of course, the Amazon uh, updates with you know, potential updates with you know how giveaways and reviews works and you know whether it's a new account or what's going on with that. We talked about that for a while, and then we also talked uh, some about um, some traffic methods, especially YouTube pay per clicks. But then we got to talking about you know, the uh, unsettled economic conditions in China, you know, how, how the China econo uh, economy is kind of zagging around. And we talked about, um, you know, th that along with the updates in, in Amazon, people could really feel kind of unsettled now. But it, this is one of the things for, uh, that, that you and Liz are doing with this China mastermind that I'm really excited about. You actually just created a brand new video. I want everybody to have a look at it. Actually, I'm going to go over that page right now. It's omgmachines.com slash Liz dash John dash mastermind dot PHP and I'll, I'll put that up on that that notepad for you here. China. Oh wait, sorry. It's a uh, uh, omgmachines.com slash Liz dash John dash mastermind dot PHP. So that's where to go to and I'll paste it in the chat box. Do it this way, a little bit nicer. All right. Great. And I want to show you something. First of all, John created this video. I, uh, of course, you know, presumably after this webinar, we're about an hour in. We'll probably uh, uh, go uh, still a little while longer, especially now that we've got John on the line here. But. Um, but uh, you know, John cut this new video for uh, uh, for you. I, I actually just watched it. It's excellent. 
And it really answers, we had a lot of people asking us questions about the China mass rhyme. And that's important because time is, uh, it, terms, it turns out the time's running out. Uh, ticket sales have been a little bit uh, more brisk than we expected. And they're now, it uh, looks like um, more than halfway sold out. So it's uh, you know, a good time to jump on this. It's also a, a little bit word's been getting out in some, some other social media sites and some other groups and stuff like that. Uh, you know, people finding out about it. But anyways, uh, we, we, we've been trying to keep it you know, really exclusive. Um, so uh, uh, on this page, this is where Liz and John's mastermind is. And, and John, they can watch the video. But you really gave a, a lot more clarity and a lot more updates. You, you and Liz got together in, uh, in Tampa, as everybody knows, for, uh, for uh, almost a whole week. Uh, did a lot of planning on things. And then uh, in the last several days, since then, you guys have done more planning and more updates, and then you put this video together. And can you give people a sense? Because what you guys really are doing, again, like these, you know, there are these pivot points that people can make. Uh, you know, if China is, for example, um, you know, if, if the conditions are, you know, are changing in China and people are feeling, you know, uh, those conditions, then you know, what better time to go than now with two aces who really know what they're doing? And you guys are bringing, you know, at this point, actually a whole mastermind with you of uh, people, you know, who are even having like seven figure months, just like Liz is on, on Amazon. This is extraordinary success. John, can you, can you tell us more about uh, you know, some of the uh, further details that you guys have been able to finally release? Well, I don't know what you've already talked about. So if I repeat myself, I apologize. Um, but, you know, basically we're bringing together this group and what we plan on doing I mean, the, the China aspect itself is, is, is critical, especially, like you said, with everything that's going on. I also think with everything that's going on, it, it actually gives us more leverage with the vendors over there because they're going to be a little hungrier to, uh, to, you know, to, to, um, to do business. But being able to navigate your way through, through China and the Canton Fair is, 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 it's not easy. If, you know, I remember my first time, I, I, was, I was lost. I was completely lost. So, um, you know, between Liz and I, I think together we've been there probably eight or nine times. So, what we're, you know, we're, we're going to focus on that. But more than that, what we plan on doing is a couple of days of hardcore training. So it's, you know, going to China is critical because it starts with finding the right product. And what I mean by the right product is being able to identify what sells well on Amazon. But on top of that is being able to find a good vendor that can supply you with quality and that will support you. And a lot of times that's better done face to face. So that can, that can happen in China. But um, if you're able to find an amazing product and find an amazing vendor without going to China, then what do you do with it after? I mean, it's great to have it, but if you can't sell it on Amazon because you don't know the right steps, or you don't know, you know, what, what I always do, I always say is that, you know, um, most of us that started, um, we, we, you know, we started from that, that uh, from ASM. I wasn't sure how, if I should say that or not, but we started from ASM. And what I, what I say to, to some of my coaching students in, in, with ASM, ASM teaches us to do what 90 to 95% of what Amazon sellers don't do. What we have to do is what 95% of ASMers aren't doing because they are our competition. So with that being said, you know, Liz and I have been doing this for a while. We've been very blessed with amazing success. And a lot of that had to do with the people we surrounded ourselves with. I know for me, you know, my first trip to China was amazing. And, it, and it, more so because of the people that were there and the people that I was able to hang out with and build a relationship with. These were people that were just uh, amazing, loving, caring, open people that were super successful on Amazon. So by building that relationship, I had people that I could turn to and that helped guide me uh, through some critical times through my business. And because of that, I was able to have huge success early on. So what we're going to do is we're going to teach you some of the hardcore. And again, it's for beginners too. So this is not uh, uh, rocket science, but um, we're going to teach you the hardcore stuff that you're not going to learn through ASM. You're not going to learn through some of these online courses. But the things that we have used and the people that, that, that we're closest to that have great success that they have used, they get, get the results that we get. Sometimes, you know, what, one of my favorite um, authors or motivators is Tony Robbins. 
and he talks about that one millimeter shift. Just that, and, and he, the analogy he used was a golf swing. I mean, you could just make a, a, one adjustment and could change your golf game. You could go from slicing to, to hitting it straight down, uh, you know, um, far and straight. And it's the same thing here. It, by making some minor changes, or you may have to make some major changes, it, it, depending on um, what you're doing, can make a major difference in your business. So we're going to focus a couple of days on giving those hardcore strategies and actually some stuff, some inside secrets that cannot be shared openly, cannot be uh, taught in, a, in like an ASM type format. Um, you know, some of these secrets that, again, we've used and, and the people that we've associated ourselves with. We're also, which is really, really exciting, is Liz and I have invited some special guests. And, and some of these special guests are the people that I was referring to, the people that were there for me early on that are doing anywhere from, you know, 600000 to over a million dollars a month consistently. And they're just super, super successful people and great people to know and very giving people. So the networking itself is, is going to be invaluable, invaluable. So, you, you know, you have the, the China event itself, being in China, being able to navigate through the Canton Fair, um, learning how to negotiate with these people. And, and we've shared in the past in some webinars, so I hate to repeat myself, but in case uh, it's the first time for somebody, you know, we've been able to, I've been able to negotiate partnerships and get up to a quarter of a million dollars in product fronted to me. So, you know, one of the biggest challenges that some have is scaling, in scaling your business is cash flow. Well, that wasn't a cash flow issue for me because they were able to give me the product. So there are certain things that, again, that, that we're going to teach. It's the things that we've done. And, and on top of that, you know, and I always think it's important to, to mention this, we're not going to teach things that are theory or somebody told me or a rumor. or we think We're going to be teaching the things that we do, that we have tested, and we have proven to ourselves that they work. So if we talk about it, it's because we've used it and it's worked, and it's made a huge difference in our business. Yeah. So, again, you got – China itself, you got the hardcore training, and I mentioned this in the video. If you're looking for an event where we're going to go sightseeing and we're going to, you know, uh, you know, dance on top of the Great Wall and check out the Terracotta Museum, um, which are all very cool things, this is not the event for you. This is all about business. This is all about growing your business. I mean, Liz and Liz and I have had many conversations. We're very passionate about this, and more than that, we want to deliver. And we're going to deliver. But it's important to us to create value. We want to deliver 10 times, 50 times more than what anybody invests in, in this. Um, and we, and, and we, you know, we're confident that people are going to walk away with that, um, you know, super happy and super satisfied that they went. And we're going to give them things that they can go back and apply to their business. They can even apply this stuff to the business while they're there. And will make a change. It'll make a difference in their business. Yeah, absolutely. Super confident. This, this is uh, everyone. This is such a this is such a big event. This is such a big deal. Uh, it's, it's such a rare thing. Uh, Liz and John have never done this before. I'll come out front of it and say that uh, yeah, this has my hundred percent endorsement. I've been uh, utterly out in front of this, and I, I don't have any financial connection to this event whatsoever. Uh, you know, I, I'm not get, uh, earning any sort of commission. And you know, I can just tell you from an a absolute uh, unbiased, unfiltered point of view, you know, when I went to China, you know, I got my start with, um, you know, essentially with, with retail arbitrage and, and, um, <clears throat> and e-commerce. And then it was, you know, I, then for quite a while, I've, uh, you know, really been much more focused on information marketing and affiliate marketing and, and doing SEO client consulting and such. So, um, you know, really, you know, Liz was, you know, kind of offered me the opportunity to kind of get back into it, which I have been, it's really been enjoyable and it happened so quickly, but, but how did it happen so quickly? It's, I'm telling you, it's not because I have a lot of money to invest. I mean, that's great, but I haven't invested that much money is the crazy thing. Uh, it was, it was the understanding of it. And of course, with the training in OMG that Liz has done, I mean, you see it by the earnings reports. Of course, the training that we've put in here, we do everything we can to convey in this format. It's a great format. It's a great format. That's why we're having so uh, so much success. You know, this format of having you know uh, these player coaches, incredible player coaches like Liz and John, and, you know, uh, other people you're you know 
dealing with like Cotton and Greg Morrison and Fletch and Joe, Jimmy, uh, everybody else. But, um, uh, you know, that format where you're learning over their shoulder by these great, you know, these great videos directly from their businesses and then getting to get your questions answered like today. And then also having our wonderful community. It works. It's, it's fantastic. But there, there's some things we can't do, which is we can't stick the continent of, you know, the continent of Asia inside of you know, your OMG members area, you know, and just have you maybe at some point with virtual reality, that'll somehow be real, realistic. I mean, really seriously, maybe it will be. But, um, but for now, um, you, th there are just boundaries and you can't go and, for example, pick a product, have that, you know, brand new product, you know, for, um, you know, that, that hasn't even hit the streets of America, hasn't even really hit the stores yet at all and be holding in your hand and turn to Liz and John and say, how, sh you know, is this good? How should I launch it? For example, right? And, you know, what more do you want? Because that's what I experienced. It was nuts. It was nuts. That, that trip that I took, hopefully everybody here has watched at least part of the China documentary and gone through that. Oh, uh, you know, yeah, we released that just a little while back or I don't know how much, it, oh, I guess we haven't released it yet. Shoot, I guess that's really, really a, a cruel and unfair tease. I, I, I forgot that, that David's uh, still still processing that. But anyways, I'll, I'll try to give it to you from my eyes, you know, just uh, being there with Liz and, and also these other people that are talking about, that's not like some side thing. Like, I mean, having Kevin Jin there was unbelievable for me. Uh, you know, Ke Kevin guided me through so many, uh, so much fine tuned understanding of how to talk with vendors and, and then he was there when I needed to adjust and ask him some more questions. And I was just nuts. Having Liz there just gave me so much confidence and uh, so much clarity as to what was going on. And it really just helped me take off very, very quickly. And scale, I mean, it's been nuts. So I, I, I just want to, um, you know, uh, let people understand that there's just things that you can't do in person. And also it's intense and that's a great thing. I mean, you want to talk about like being Neo and jacking into the matrix you go to China, I mean, your senses are on 100%. I mean, you're in uh, a different environment. Your senses are heightened. You learn very quickly. You know, you're because you're being bombarded with so much new information. And to have guides like this, I mean, really like personally taking you through and helping you, you know, uh, guide you through those forks in the road um, that, that come up and, and really helping you, you know, build essentially that, that mental foundation right there in person with the product because we're selling products. I mean, this is Amazon. We sell products and I don't care what's going on with the economy uh, right now. One thing I can tell you is that in 2016, a whole heck of a lot of products from China are going to be sold on Amazon and you can get in on that and make a huge amount of money and, you know, add to that pie and make the pie bigger. Uh, and of course, everyone here is doing that, but I mean, there's no better way than to connect directly one-on-one, -on -one, you know, with these people who are selling you products, hold the products, see the new products, uh, you know, uh, deal directly uh, you know, with the team that's helping you build your business because they're, you know, helping produce your products. So you know, I just want to, you know, just once again, uh, uh, and it's really exciting. And I'll tell you another thing that, that's neat is that because we're doing this, uh, th this promotion, there is, there is one upshot that I really like, and it you know, makes it highly worth it for me to, uh, to, to bang the drum about this is that, Everyone's really benefiting, even us talking about this and, and going in detail and, and uh, promoting Liz and John's China Mastermind. A great thing about it is that it gives us the opportunity, just even in marketing it, hopefully you're getting at least a sense, even if you can't go, uh, either because of the cost or because it sells out, uh, you know, because it sells out before you're, you're ready to jump in or because, um, because uh, you, you just, some people just literally can't even travel, that, you know, there could be issues, family or health or, or whatever. But, but hopefully you're getting at least more of a sense of what's there and you can at least uh, you know, uh, pick up some, some contextual details that will help you when you're dealing on Alibaba or uh, when you're dealing with a buyer's agent from home. And we, do, and we, tr we really do uh, try to bend over backwards to try to get you that best information from home. So it's actually kind of nice a little bit in marketing this event, it, it kind of gets you know, uh, us a little bit keener and helps us a little bit more focus in on uh, some of the fine-tuned points of what it's like being over in China. So hopefully from home, you can benefit from that right now. And, uh, you know, uh, so it kind of in a sense, everybody wins, which is uh, really, really great.
So let's jump at, back into the uh, question box. Of course, if you have questions, uh, more questions about that event, you can put them in your question box. Also, if you have more questions in general about Amazon, anything we've covered or haven't covered yet, now's a great time to talk about it. Liz, before we move back to, to uh, Q&A, was there anything that you wanted to add about the mastermind? Uh, no, I think John hit the nail on the head pretty well. Great. I agree, he really did. Um, oh, uh, ties on. Um, oh, that's so cool. I don't know what this, uh, I, I don't know when uh, Ty posted this, but I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, kind of post this comment. I, I could actually bring Ty live and she can tell us what she meant by this. But it looks like a great comment. She's probably uh, packing in the background. Ty's now running over to her computer, getting her headset on, is my prediction. Unless she's eating a sandwich in the kitchen and, and not hearing me at all. <laughs> Let's find out. All right, she should be coming online. Ty, are you there? Yes, and I'm not eating a sandwich or packing, surprisingly. <laughs> okay, great. Well, it was, it was great, by the way. We saw um, Shauna in, um, in Chicago, and she is just so excited. She, uh, she, uh, she's your cousin. Um, as people saw from the retail arbitrage videos that you and I shot together, that's when the day when, when you took uh, uh, Ira and Shauna in field for the first time, and, and now they have whole careers that they're building on. Uh, um, so you know, it was just a great singer. She's so excited and picking up head of steam. It's excellent. And uh, so what's up, what's up with this comment here? Oh, I came on a little bit late, and I think Liz was basically talking about taking action. And, um, and so when she was talking about that, that's when I wrote that, that uh, comment was, you know, me and Liz always talk about with, with retail art arbitrage the first day you go into the store and you want to quit because you're not finding anything or it's too it's not like what you thought it was or it's just really difficult some days you have ups and some days you have downs um so you know the thing i love about liz is that she really just takes action and that's the thing that i've noticed um in talking with a lot of the successful omgers and and um, people like that is that they take action on stuff um so definitely Taking action is is where it's at, and that's why where I, where that quote came from is is just kind of agreeing with Liz and taking action, but being consistent and going back and, and figuring out stuff and doing stuff. And she was talking about the Periscope and how she didn't know how it worked or whatever, yeah. but she just figured it out along the way and she just took action and she did it. So it's actually that's a, it's actually I, a really great angle on things, Ty. And I'm glad you brought it up because you know uh, David Mills just did a, a video recently and he was kind of differentiating on. The taking massive action because you really do have to take massive action and, and no matter what with internet marketing it's going to be much more forgiving than in the you know in the real world with like you know signing a big lease for a, a brick and mortar store or buying a franchise or whatever it is that people do to get started in, in the in the real world um but but really once you have the kind of training that you're getting here from uh from from liz from john gill ty has given us wonderful training on uh on retail arbitrage we've been really grateful for that um then 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 that's the time to take massive action like you take massive action when the conditions are right you know like you have all these overwhelming advantages in your favor then then that's the time to you know slam your your foot on the pedal and and go forward and it's one of the reasons why i want you know really people to take uh yeah and you know uh ty you were in china with liz um, and, and, and with the, the, uh, a number of the people that are going to be uh, on this uh, China Mastermind with, with John, I mean, it's just a, I mean, what a wonderful experience. I mean, that trip really, I mean, it was great for me. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts on going in field with Liz and what that's like? Um, I tell you, the trip to China that I experienced last time with Liz was so awesome. I learned a lot. And then just... It's so invaluable getting to know people and knowing the right people. And I don't know what kind of – Liz is just awesome. I love Liz. And you learn so much. I learned a lot. And it's really helped me with a lot of things in my business. And, you know, masterminding and connecting with the right people and learning how to network and negotiate with 
the vendors there and how to work a show and things like that, that's that's very important and it's going to be, I think, invaluable to anybody's business. Well, and, and, and you know what, Mike? Yes. I just want to say something. I think Ty was like a little bit, um, like she was tongue-tied because she the, the thing she wanted to tell everybody and she was like, huh, maybe I shouldn't tell everybody that. But the reason that she like was happy to make connection with me is I'm like one of the funnest people in the world. That's the truth. <laughs> That I know that a lot of people don't realize that about me because I'm always so serious and talking like nerd talk about Amazon. But I think what people don't realize is that like I'm a boatload of fun. Oh. I, I haven't seen that side yet. What would you say, John? I haven't seen that side yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're full of crap, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Liz, I, I can uh, verify up and down and left and right that Liz is about as much fun as it possibly gets. Uh, so there's no question about that. Um, <laughs> uh, Liz and I have spent a lot of time together in the last six months, and uh, I've never seen her not be fun, um, uh, which which is a good thing. I mean, always pleasant, uh, for sure. Other than after the Periscope, I was exhausted. You were uh, that that was definitely a brain drain um, on uh, on Liz. But you know, uh, it, brain drain leads to brain gain. <laughs> Um, okay, great. Um, uh, uh, the the thing here, though, uh, ultimately, you know, just to uh, kind of wrap this up, and we'll we'll get back to, to questions. Um, is that uh, uh, Ty? You were able to not not just go and and not just have a great experience, but you were actually even able to go back to China on your own after that and have really good success. And and um, you know, you ordered some products. You have some products coming in. And so obviously, you know, it worked for you. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, I went back to China um, not too long after that, a couple of months or so after um, the Canton Fair on my own, um, sourcing products and things like that, um, based off of some of the things that I learned with the group there with Liz. Awesome. awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, there's no, no no better uh, no better thumbs up than that. So like getting getting fish and getting taught how to fish. All right, this is from Virginia. Uh, getting back into Q and A here, and I'll jump on the NHP team Facebook. But I know I've really neglected it. We have hardly any. We we did get some uh, uh, welcomes to John there. Um, okay, it says was uh, wasn't able to view. The, this is Virginia. Uh, she wasn't able to view the Periscope. Where should she have gone? That was in the OMG Way Facebook group. That was in the OMG Way Facebook group. And uh, if you're having trouble uh, anytime finding one of these groups or whatever, you can always uh, message me on Facebook and I will help you with that. But it was just a link off of the, actually I can just probably pull it up right here. Let's go to it. So this is the OMG Way Facebook group. This is the, the image thread from, uh, from the event, which is a really fun event there. And then Cotton, uh, Cotton's got a big assimilation to, uh, Wednesday, by the way. It's going to be exciting. And then where is... This one here it is. So this was the um, oh this is the preview one, and then yeah, well, I think we might have to do next time is like pin it to the top of OMG Way just for the yeah. time. Yeah. Because I think they disappear after a while. So again, it's like still getting the hang of how the heck things are done because I definitely don't know. Yeah, yeah, because I try I tried to watch, and we should figure out if there's a way that we can record the replay because. We have, uh, well, th this is kind of the point. I, I know we're getting kind of like rattling on about this um, Periscope, but because we did it, we really got the chance to, to game plan. So we, we actually have some pretty fun plans for Miami that we're going to try some new tests that we're going to run with it, uh, including some uh, potential for arbitrage. We, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But um, but no matter what, we will have, uh, we'll have more fun with it. But um, the... the uh, um, you know, the, the bottom line with that, of course, is you know, like what David Mills is saying, when you establish a, a feedback loop with a new technology, it's really going to help you have more success. And, and that's a, a great way of doing things. And of course, we, uh, we, we're going to try to do a great job with these uh, Miami um, periscopes. Okay. Um, our, this is from Benjamin. Our YouTube pay-per-click ads um, good for a local service-based business. Liz, I think you, also, you already touched on this and, and it absolutely is. Okay. And, and by the way, you'll be the only one offering it as well. Yeah. I, I hardly, I rarely see any, that's just what's so crazy. I rarely see any for local like businesses. It's kind of like unbelievable. Yep. 
Oh, wow, Matson's on. Uh, I just saw him. Let me go and see if I can pull him in. Um, okay, uh, this is from Michael Lando Spears. Um, is it realistic to create a passive recurring income with Amazon private label? I'm unsure whether products need constant management after launch or whether they're mostly autopilot after that, or if it depends on the product. I'm hoping to make something similar to my affiliate SEO business. Now, uh, to, to give everybody a sense, uh, um, Michael's a, a, a young man from uh, the UK, and he's, uh, I think, averaging ballpark around 20 grand a month last time I heard uh, in affiliate commissions. So that's kind of the perspective that he's he's coming at things from, and he's just kind of uh, curious and, and trying new things. Liz, you you've also had a lot of success with affiliate marketing. How would you how would you compare it? Um, I think it's it requires a little bit more work than affiliate marketing from the perspective of you're going to have to provide customer service when you actually get a good product going. It's going to need customer service, whether that be you or through an outsourcer. That's perfectly fine, but you'll also in some cases, depending on what niche you, you go into, you're going to have to have some type of promotional maintenance in order to make those rankings either move up further or maintain their rank. Because it's sort of like more or less like SEO. You know, like an SEO, you don't really like – I know a lot of newbie SEOs make this mistake, is they don't actually count on – this especially happens in YouTube SEO. Um, they don't so much count on – or they're not thinking of what their opponents are doing while they're SEOing a video, their opponents in most cases are also SEOing their videos. So what you have to realize is to a certain degree, if you're in a competitive niche, you're going to have to maintain that somehow in order to like stay on top. Whereas every, everybody's always gunning for you and trying to get their video to rank and stuff like that. So it's sort of like the same on Amazon. It's very similar to SEO in terms of how, the, how you rank inside of the Amazon search engine. And you're definitely going to have to do some type of maintenance especially like customer service and things like that. Okay, great. And then inventory management and, and you go into several things like that. So I don't believe it's completely passive. I know I have to work on my business just about every day until I outsource those jobs that um, I typically do, which I like to do the promotions. I like to run traffic, so I kind of like maintain control over that. I don't think I'll ever like to outsource those things. Yeah. Those, those are just like kind of my my hobbies. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, definitely. Um, I may have made a bit of a mistake. Um, I tried to uh, uh, make uh, Matson's um, microphone live, and I accidentally made him an organizer. But it looks like, oh, he is connected to audio. Matson, are you there? Oh, hello. Do you hear me? I hear you, Matson. Um, I wanted. I, I wondered. We're we're uh, we're winding down our uh, uh, beginning to wind down our promotion for uh, for Liz's mastermind. And I know that you were there last time, and I was uh, curious if you if you care to speak out on, on what it was like for you uh, to go out in the field with, with Liz and to work with her. I can tell you that Liz is very fun, even when she has a <laughs> fever. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun in China. That's great. And the first two times I went to China, I hated China. And then I started hanging out with Liz, and she made China really fun. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Um, I, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, um, like, like, like in a sense, that's uh, you, you might think that that's uh, uh, kind of uh, a bit uh, a bit trivial, but it, it's really not. Um, you know, like like I've been talking this week um, very much about being an A-type player and um, and this whole you know idea that underpins the, the winning team is that we really try to bring these A-type players together, people that are pleasant. Um, to work with, but also very on the ball, um, insightful, uh, make, they make good decisions and so forth. And they're, and they're really timely and, uh, uh, the pleasantness, you can't leave it out. I mean, uh, when I got there, uh, Liz will tell you the story. I mean, uh, th this, the guy who, uh, at the bus called me Assassin's Creed cause I had my hoodie pulled like straight over my head and I was like in this like permanent scowl and, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, Liz, <laughs> Liz really brought it to life for me. I, I had a great time uh, as well. I really did. It was it was it was nuts. I was um, uh, so uh, so. Uh, any other notes? You've, you've been with Liz actually uh, twice now. Um, uh, Max, is that correct? Yes. Uh, why has it been twice? Yeah, I think it's twice in China, but a bunch yeah. of times everywhere else. Yeah, we hang out so much. I lost track of how many times we're to China, but. Liz is always fun, so uh, 
I, I like to plan my trips around when Liz is going. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah we, I was going, she was going to Ewu and I was going somewhere else, and we made sure to coordinate so we could meet up in Hong Kong because it's always fun going with Liz. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to be in the, uh, are you going to be going uh, as well? Are you part of the entourage? <laughs> I wish I was part of the entourage. I don't think I'm going to make it this time because I'm, I'm going to China in November and I don't think I can go twice that close together, but we'll right. see. Awesome. Awesome. So what did, what did you mean by this, uh, uh, Mattson? And uh, for people who haven't met Mattson, he and his brother Morgan are uh, both operating extremely successful. You know, we're talking multiple six figures per month. A uh, very very successful Amazon business. Um, uh, so you, you put this uh, message in the question box. I think in the short run we'll see the prices go up because of the devaluing of the China uh, the uh, Chinese currency. Um, but I think if their economy continues to slow down, we'll start to see wages come back down uh, as they have a surplus of labor. What, what did you mean by that? Well. The reason they devalue the, the dollar, their dollar to our dollar is because uh, their economy is slowing down and so they make it more affordable for us to buy things so that they can get more sales uh, to keep their economy growing. But uh, and, and so some, some uh, suppliers might take advantage of that and raise their prices uh, to, because uh, things are cheaper to us, so they can just raise the price and take that that difference. But what happens is if their economy continues to slow down, Liz talked about the wages are going up at the factory workers because everybody wants to move into the city and get better quality of life jobs. Well, uh, as the economy slows down, people start to get laid off, and that drives pressure to lower the wages across the board, and so then we can take advantage of lower prices from that. And then as John mentioned briefly, uh, as the factory owners start to feel a pinch, they will be in incentivized to offer better deals, not just price deals, but credit term deals, which are exciting to me that uh, a lot of factories will be motivated to make good deals with you. So um, I, I think it's too early to tell what will happen, but there's potential that it could be really good. All right, great. Great. That was good, uh, good analysis there and uh, very helpful. Again, it's kind of, um, you know, just kind of so shocking to me how, how many wonderful people we have in our community, so many that, that, uh, that Liz brought over to us, um, like Madsen. So, Madsen, thanks for, uh, for, for jumping on. Um, Okay, let's see here. This I is going to go on before Liz, but but that's okay. We're good friends. That's true, but she, you became much more involved. <laughs> no, I mean, but 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 in reality, you were an OMG before for Liz, but you really became involved in OMG. Like she she was really the one that connected me to uh, that, to you and Morgan. That is that is absolutely true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I met met you. Uh, uh, I got, I, and Liz got involved with OMG. That's when I got more active in it. Yeah, which has been, I, I, again, like, like there's just all these kind of positive ripple effects that happen because of the way we do things. And it's, it's really, it, it's a blessing because I'm really glad. I, I'll, I'll just tell everybody here. I, I've become really good friends with Mattson and with his brother, um, uh, Morgan. You hang out as, uh, as much as humanly possible. And, and they're so they're so sharp and, and uh, again, A-type players, you know, just uh, really pleasant to hang out with. And yet, you know, when it's time to do business, boom, 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 it gets done, it gets done timely, and, and it's, a, it's a great thing. Um, okay, this is from Leslie. Uh, is there a cutoff date um, as to when we are allowed to ship the product to Amazon before the holidays? So what, what's your sense of that, Liz? Um, there's not, like, it just sort of depends. Like, there's not really a cutoff date, but you have to sort of estimate how long it typically takes to get to Amazon to begin with, and then um, I'm trying to send things in from like I think the, my absolute usual like last day that I send things in is usually like around the 13th because I estimate that like and I'm meaning like a lot of things. Um, I'm estimate that it takes about a week to get processed and, and get there, and then um, 
by the time they actually sort it out and stuff, then it starts selling, and I've got a couple days left of sell, of selling, sometimes even two days, um, in order for them to sell it. So I'll I'll also I also like to keep it under a certain amount because I know if I have if I get excess stuff in there at that time, they're also going to ship it out to one warehouse and then distribute it themselves, right. and that will also like. Um, add extra time, so I usually try to send less than 24 uh, units of items, and usually those get separated out to three different centers, so they go directly for sale immediately, as opposed to if you send above 25, that's when they send them to one warehouse, and then they um, decide where it goes, so that takes extra time, so I try to keep every product I send from the 13th on to under um, 25 units or less, that way it gets separated to three warehouses, because if not, they send it to one warehouse and then they ship it out, and that takes that can take up to like two. I've seen some take as much as two weeks. Right. All right, great. And I just noticed that uh, Jimmy, we have Jimmy Kelly. We have Jimmy Kelly has uh, has joined us. Are you there, Jimmy? Hey, Mike. How's it going, man? I am. Sorry for the late entry. Oh no, no problem. <laughs> Good. We're, how are you doing? Glad, glad to have you at all. Uh, I guess if if people have. Uh, we had we had an, an SEO question earlier about uh, about Amazon, uh, but but also ranking things off of Amazon. I actually mentioned earlier. Do you, do you still think that um, that Weebly's are are good? You know, for like maybe make a we making a Weebly up and then um, linking it over to an Amazon listing is that still pretty wise? I think any high DA property you can get your hands on, and turning it into Something you can utilize to transfer the traffic to your Amazon product is a good idea. Sure. All right. So, so if we, you can't do it with the Amazon property itself, <laughs> we should should be able to uh, to rank the Amazon quality. Actually, uh, you've been working on Amazon rankings for quite a while, and uh, obviously uh, we've got Rankazon now, which is really exciting. And uh, and, and there's even some upgrades that are coming uh, around the around the bend because Liz and Mike Bittler have been working on that. So we really uh, appreciate them uh, for that as well. But uh, but you and Greg have both been working on the Amazon rankings and uh, quite uh, quite exciting stuff. So glad that you uh, that you jumped on. If there's any uh, SEO evil or bubbles that you want to draw or stuff like that, just let me know. I will immediately turn over the uh, the, the, the power to you, and you can you can uh, uh, tell people evil SEO methods anytime you want. All right, sounds like a plan. Sound good. All right, great. All right, so we now have Jimmy Kelly on. Jim, Jimmy is an uh, absolute SEO superstar. Uh, really utterly transformed the way that we do SEO at uh, OMG. And he is the first person who really uh, showed us that we could uh, do stuff like rank Amazon pages. And I, like what I mean is really efficiently. Like, of course, the idea, the concept was somewhat out there, but he showed us exactly how to do it and how to do it well. And it's been really wonderful. Um, usually he's been on the t uh, Tuesday webinars, but we're, we're looking to uh, ha have a little bit more uh, some other stuff that we're going to be doing with Jimmy webinar wise in the next several weeks. So it's going to be exciting. Uh, this is in, uh, so, so Jimmy, anytime if you want to talk about something, let me know. And otherwise stand by for a potential brilliant SEO question and do SEO evil in the background. Um, here is David Fripp. David says, Hey, uh, John, Liz, and Mike, uh, the focus is obviously on Amazon, but do any of you use eBay? I've added 30% to my top line by adding eBay this month. The selling style is different, and I list in a different way to maximize eBay, uh, but I will not ignore it in the future. Uh, your thoughts, please. Um, I mean, I've done a lot of eBay in the past, uh, but but I'm, I'm not doing any now. What about you, Liz? Uh, I used to be one of the a pretty big eBay power seller, um, but I'm I only do it very rarely now because it's a lot of work getting the actual listing up and then shipping it out. I I mean, we're just not good at getting. Uh, stuff shipped out we really suck at it so it's something that I prefer not to do and I that's why I sell on Amazon because I don't like to sell on eBay if I'm gonna ship it out on my own um, it's gonna be through my own e-com site and even my own e-com site I actually fulfill it through Amazon all right great so yeah yes, uh, third-party fulfillment by Amazon to fulfill that yeah and obviously FBA in, in many cases is kind of that game changer that people are looking for um, John, I'm fairly confident that you don't use too much eBay. Is that right? I use about zero. My products are all over eBay, but not for me. Yeah, okay. And Madison, you don't use it either, right? I think he might be gone. Okay. I bet he's still there. But anyways. Um, I don't believe I don't believe Matson does use it at all either, though. Yeah. 
Actually, Ty, do you use eBay at all? Nope, I do not. Okay. Um, yeah, it's well, just such a anyway. hassle. It's such a hassle. Yep. Matson? Uh, I, yeah, I don't. I, I'm driving. That's why I muted myself. But oh, uh, no, I don't. I don't do uh, eBay either. Okay, great. All right. I do, um, I do have my uh, e-commerce e site that I use Amazon for fulfillment, like Liz. Yeah, that's the same thing I do. Great. Um, now, now we do have uh, we do have some training on uh, eBay from from Brad Mabry. Uh, D David, uh, I know David's had more and more success recently. We're really excited for him. So congrats, David. And David, if you if you uh, f feel like preparing, uh, you know, a couple of videos or a guide to how OMGers can do that, uh, I'm sure I'm sure there there will be some who want to take advantage of it and a 30% gain in your business. Uh, Dave, David's business has gotten pretty significant size uh, at this point. He's he's into five figures per month right now with his uh, with his business. So so that's uh, uh, you're going to be a significant increase if he's added thirty. Yeah, and and you know what, Mike? I mean, if it's working for him, I would continue to use it as long as he's having success, like fulfilling it. I can tell you that my brother actually still uses eBay, and he basically sells all the frozen stuff that he's not allowed to sell on Amazon. He sells it on right. eBay. And he sells it pretty well. So he just, there's a lot of things that he finds still nowadays, like in thrift shops and things like that, where he can't sell it on Amazon because there's nothing listed like it. So for things like that, he goes on eBay and he does a pretty good job of doing well, it. So, and, and you and actually, some, when I'm. Yeah, you, you, with the, like the Legos and stuff where, where you would sometimes use it as well, right? Right. Well, but the thing is that he's the one that, that lists it for me. So I'm not good at eBay anymore. It's something that I kind of like left behind a long time ago and I haven't used it since so when I need to list stuff on eBay he actually puts it up for me yeah and, 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 and he manages all that yeah and when I was getting my start with e-commerce I, I was I, I was for you know fulfilling myself because um, there, there was no FBA back then and I was uh, doing a huge number of auctions on eBay like huge I mean I would sometimes do I think one week I did 8,000 auctions uh, it was the most that I, that I remember doing uh, and I, I did them as a one-man gang. I just did them myself. I, I had w one person to help me with uh, with packing and shipping, uh, and they and they really did help. But it was it was just a just a, a pretty small operation at the time. Um, okay, we have a, a comment here from Michael Lando Spears. Um, thanks for the answer, Liz. Um, all right, so there's more maintenance uh, than affiliate stuff. I basically just don't want to end up with something which while profitable sells uh, all my time off. Do you recommend sources of various outsourceable tasks? And I assume you meant other companies beyond your own VAs. Um, yeah, I mean, the main thing is you're gonna need VAs to out uh, customer service. And uh, I'm trying to remember the other things I told them. Uh, somebody to do your shipping. So there's somebody like Kevin Jin's company, which is River Source Logistic to ship your things in since you're in the UK. Um, you're going to want them to at least check your first shipment and or prep it or continue to prep uh, shipments beyond that. And I don't actually recommend any other company. I know there's been some people that have posted inside of OMG. The reason that I recommend them is because like I use them. And the thing is that I use them because I trust them for one, for starters. Number two, they're big time Amazon sellers. So they know, they come, they just know what to do in any particular instance and um, number three is I, I sometimes can be uh, and, and this is like one of my key weaknesses I I not the most um, I, I have so many things to do that sometimes I don't get them done uh, by their deadline so in the case of like Kevin and Jen they kind of put up a lot with me I'm probably like one of the worst clients to have um, and I can tell you that when I was in Hong Kong and I, I missed my flight I had to send Kevin a document and I couldn't get it because I was like still in the air when I was not supposed to be so um, he managed to fix that up for me so again that that comes down to having a relationship with them and being able to just like calm up on the phone and say like you know what I'm missing my flight by 10 hours and I won't have that document till I land um, so that's kinda why I like to use them because they know what they're doing and I know with them I get stuff done so I prefer to pay a, a little bit more for premium services as opposed to like using uh, another service that I have no idea like how it works. Great, great. I absolutely concur 100%. Kevin and Jen are awesome. This is a uh, question for Jimmy. Uh, and by the way, I, I've visited their warehouse now 
either two or three times. And it, every time, I, it's just impressive to me um, how they operate. Saw them uh, d doing some unpacking, and, and they really, uh, and they have great people that work there. It's, it's just really, really well done. Uh, like, um, like Liz was saying earlier, uh, I think Jen has like a particular eye towards uh, organization. Um, and then uh, Kev just has a certain, um, like, you know, understanding of how the marketing is going to happen and, and just product, product quality. And it really just meshes together in this way where they have such a great service. And everyone who's, who's uh, tried it, who I uh, talked to, has just really, really been happy. Right. Yeah. And one other thing, too, about the mic is they're super helpful. Like, they actually um, recorded a video for me for something that I had to do because, again, um, as I've told everybody in the past, I had never prepped, um, not necessarily prepped, but loaded a shipment through Amazon. I had actually done it through a third-party software uh, prior to actually learning how to do it. And then I outsourced it to my brother who does all that. So I had never prepped a shipment ever within Amazon. And they actually took the time to film me a video to show me exactly how to do it step by step. Oh, wow. So if that's not great like customer service, I don't know what is. So I don't recommend anyone else except for them because I know they're going to get the job done and they're going to get the job done right. Yeah, and, and this is one of those critical chain things um, that that, that it, can, it can kind of overwhelm you personally to, to almost be to the point where you almost literally couldn't do it yourself. Um, I mean, if you get to a big enough scale, of course, it's one of the steps that you just have to outsource at some point. And yeah, I just have trusted people who are just sharp and on the ball. And by the way, who are all already just extremely successful. So you just don't feel like any sense that, that, that they're just going to kind of foul something up just out of kind of blind incompetence about some that, you know, there's certainly some businesses that you're going to work with on this, uh, this side of things where you, you're going to say to yourself, how could you possibly do this? And, and it's, the reason why is because they're not Amazon sellers. They don't really know the name of the game. So, yeah, I absolutely uh, recommend Kevin, Jen. And that's a, uh, a great point of value for OMGers. It's an OMG exclusive. Um, that's uh, riversourcelogistics.com uh, slash OMG is uh, where to get there. Um, let me put that up. And then we have a question for Jimmy here. OMGmachines.com. Wait. That's riversourcelogistics.com slash OMG. I believe that's correct. Let me just test that. Yeah, this is it right here. Okay, great. Yeah, it's obviously they uh, they, they they know OMG hashtag hashtag chompers. Okay, um, let's jump back to questions. It's been a great event, by the way. Um, really, really enjoying myself here. Uh, all right, question for Jimmy. Jimmy, would you recommend linking to other pages that link to your Amazon product pages or just focus links straight to the, M to the main page? I assume when he's saying linking, he means uh, like his power, like PBM links, I assume. Um, what, what would you say to this, Jimmy? Well, would it only be PBNs going to the Amazon page? <laughs> so, so, I mean, so, I, I really like to to link to other links that then point to the Amazon product. Right. Um, so, for instance, I might Do you, you want me to turn the screen over to you so you can draw some bubbles and stuff? Yeah, I can draw some bubblies. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy's very good at this. He's actually really just an excellent teacher for this uh, SEO stuff. It's quite exciting to have him do this. He first, uh, Jimmy first unveiled some of this Amazon stuff at OMG Live in 2013, OMG Live National in 2013, and it was just nuts. I mean, people went bonkers, and it was really, it, it, I hadn't seen it actually. It was pretty uh, pretty amazing. Well, sure. I could share something that might be fun for people. Cool. I don't know if they want it. I think they, <laughs> I think they want to know. Do you, uh, do you want to know? Let's, let, let's, let, let's see. Uh, what, let's get a hashtag. Uh, what group we, we have Amazon in here, or SEO folks, or what this, is it a mix? This is, yeah, it's Project Breakthrough members, Project uh, J and Project X, and, and the, the original NHB people that you joined with back in. J Jimmy joined us back in 2012, I think, uh, or, or early 2013. Uh, so it's, it's, it's like NHBers. Cool. So, 
you always have like your Amazon URL that you got, right? Yeah. And that's uh, and where are you getting this the Amazon like your, URL? Are you getting? Are, are well, you, you know, when you go in, if you do like. Okay, Mindy meant truffles. This is something you come you work in, on. Yeah, this is my my uncle's. Um, this is one of my uncle's stores <laughs> that I have fun working on from time to time. So I just send it directly. Typically, you send it directly to there. Like I try to find whatever URL Google is favoring, because you'll notice if you go back. Um, Sometimes these URLs can vary a little bit, so uh, let me show you what I mean. So in this case, we have two Amazon pages ranking. So one says five pound version, one's the other two pound. So I always just try to go with the one that's ranking highest first. Um, and then you can always just go back and double check to make sure that you know you might have multiple URLs in here. So. It just kind of depends on how Google's picking the indexing for it. So just look at the, see how the DPs are different on each of those. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Google's favoring this one, which happens to be the bigger amount, but this can all play for, you know, your internal link juice can still play a role in the other products that you're doing. So, but I always try to grab the ones that they're favoring first, and I would apply direct links to that. But typically what I do is I usually will put it through, so if I send links directly to the Amazon page, so like in this instance, his five pound version was ranking better. So what I do would come into here, grab this, and then you can go to a tool that's called test URI. Um, dot org or you can also go to something like web sniffer and you can drop these things in here so one of the shorteners that you can get uh, for Amazon is like the it's like amzn.com slash whatever the product ID is so I just get this out so it's just the so here you have the Amazon and then just the product ID and then you just check it and this will say it's a 301 move permanently. So whenever it says it's a 301 move permanently, it means that it's going to pass the link juice. Now you notice that this URL might be a little bit different than um, where your, what the original one is that we put in, but it doesn't make too much of a difference. If you come into here and we'll just open it up for a second. if it will cooperate. So now this one says it's indexed. So, because it responded back with a 200 header. So what that means is this this could be indexed in Google, but, but we know that Google's favoring that one that we already originally started with. So, but we can still channel the juice through. So um, let me just explain. <laughs> let me walk you through the process just so you guys don't get too lost. Okay, so when we when we look at this page, we can see that this is a different URL than what our product was actually ranking on Google. But when you view the page source of this, I'm just going to do a search. We're going to look for the canonical version of this. And then that displays the original one that Google is actually ranking in the search engine. So canonical basically means that say, hey, don't index this, index this one over here, that's the original source of content. So this is how they avoid like their duplicate content issues when there's multiple, you know, multiple URLs for the same product that are going on. So what this will do basically is transfer all the link juice back over to this original page. So when I'm ranking Amazon pages, a lot of times is I'll try to hide it through that 301 or I'll hide it through other URLs that canonical back over to the Amazon. So what most SEOs do is they'll come in here and just look at the specific Amazon page and who knows what they'll do, right? They could report you in multiple places. <laughs> so it's just a way that I use to hide links. The other thing that I do when I'm trying to rank Amazon pages is I'll build other sites, right? So we just showed you this one. 
So this one was kind of interesting, right? So this was the shortener on here, and then you had that went to some other URL that then points back to your original Amazon URL. So this gives us another avenue. Like um, for people that have seen me on Tuesday or watched some videos or something, you, you know that I don't like pointing too much spam directly at an Amazon product, right? So in this case, you would be okay because once you come in with those heavy hitting links on wherever it is to, you know, when you do your heavy hitting links that are going into that shortener, um, so then you end up with something like this. So that's the chain that I just showed you right there, just by converting your Amazon shortener with um, with whatever your product ID here is on the end of the Amazon URL. So that's one method I like to do. The other one is if I'm coming in directly to this, um, because it depends. You know, most of the time I don't I don't sell my own products on Amazon. I usually help others that sell theirs, and so sometimes they might have to tweak their titles for, you know keywords or other keywords they're trying to go after, whatever the case might be. So that means that that URL would change. Well, when that URL changes, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to end up with the same destination by the time you're done, so then all your links get wasted over time, depending on how drastically they change that title, right? So this is another instance where I'll go get an exact match domain, and I'm going to point it directly I'm not going to point it right away. I wait for it to get indexed first, right? So I put a, a page of content on there, and you just you can whatever link method you like to use. If you like PBNs or if you like doing DAS or if you know some other tactics, you can you can utilize all the same thing. So we'll just say they're PBNs. So. As soon as this sucker gets indexed, um, then we're going to 301 it over to our product page, like that. So that way, this thing and the juice and all the links you build to it can be a movable target along with, uh, you know, along with the Amazon URL too. Because that's kind of the problem, you know, when you're trying to optimize, you're 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 having to do it for both, and so it's a kind of a fine line depending on which way you're trying to go whether you're trying to focus on your Amazon rankings or doing your Google. So so in, in the case, Jimmy, in the case of that EMD, um, what, what is the exact matter? Basically, like let's say we're trying to rank for um, best dog shampoo. Then like if we bought like bestdogshampoo.org, would, would that be a good example of the kind of thing you're talking about? Yeah, and I believe I believe Greg shows, how, shows exactly step-by-step step how to rank like an EMD. So... And, and the TLD doesn't matter. In fact, you guys might want to go invest in, like, some of those weird TLDs that are coming up because Google's, like, involved with some of those, right? So oh, wow. they're definitely favoring some of the strange ones, you know, the ones that aren't the .com or the .org or the .net. Can you give us a, one or two examples? Well, the ones that are cheap right now are those XYZ domains. Mm -hmm. So those definitely will rank in Google. <laughs> But there's plenty of them out there, right? They've come out with a bunch of different TLDs. Right. So, so, so there might be some TLDs that you can pick up for, for, for nice kind of buyer keywords for your product, like for for example, best dog shampoo or or whatever. And and I'm you know, uh, or it could be for um, cell phone cases, you know, uh, uh, for you know, Ferrari cell cell phone case or something like that uh, is a URL you could use. Yeah, and so and then dot, you know, whatever your extension is that you end up getting. But so you think it doesn't? But you're saying it doesn't have to be LTLD. It could actually be dot X Y Z. Yeah, it can be. You know, it can. You know, because most people I know, and this is true when you're doing like a regular site, right? But we're just using this to harness the power. So Amazon already has all the trust and authority that it needs. So we just got to pump the power to it. So basically, when you're looking at this. You can usually rank an EMD easier, and I, I'm 
fairly certain that Greg has a over the shoulder series of how to do that with some of the EMTs. Yeah, the, tw the, the 2015 over the shoulder series tells you exactly. It's, that was the one we did for Iowa City SEO, and we did it the same way we did Nashville SEO, where it's total page one domination. So, yeah, and so you could just walk through that process, and then as soon as this is indexed, just 301 it over to your Amazon URL, and you'll get some good movements out of that. And, that, and the benefit is if they have to go in and change a title, so... You know, when you change the title, your URL string changes. So when they change that, then that means you can just repoint this to whatever the new title is. So that you way you can just, exactly. every, yeah, everything that you worked on to getting it to that position, you're not going to have to stress over, well, now what? We have to, we want to go after this keyword, but if we jack up this title, then we lose what we got. So um, I know that's a big stress point for some people. Great. So. Great, 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 great. Um, so yes, I would recommend, I always try to hide my links if people know me well. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm trying to hide them. I don't want them to be, I'll, pl I'll throw like, uh, you know, I'll throw links out there that they do find because I want them to just focus on those links and not focus on the stuff I'm hiding. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, that's great. V Viv says, this is so cool. Does Jimmy have an over the shoulder series on this? I'm going to need to see this a couple times. I'm a bit slow. Like this one comes to SEO. Well, first of all, uh, Jim, Jimmy has been doing uh, coaching office hours for uh, uh, Breakthrough and Director's Cut members for uh, quite a while uh, now. We're going to be actually doing some other ones, which I'm really excited about in the near future. So, yeah, you'll be able to, to meet with them more. Th this what, what, um, what Jimmy's saying with the um, uh, the uh, – best dog shampoo TLD uh, right here. The, the linking that you're doing is exactly the same as what you're doing for your 2015 over the shoulder series. The only difference is you're going to do a 301 redirect. So when people, if someone were to type in or click on a link to best dog shampoos dot X, Y, Z or to uh, you know, Ferrari cell phone case dot X, Y, Z, then that's going to point to your Amazon URL. And uh, so what will happen is that from the link, they'll just go directly to the page. They, they won't. Um, and, and so the, what that does is that, uh, the, the SEO juice, most of it will pass just directly over to your Amazon. And even if your Amazon domain changes, you'll, you'll be able to, uh, to enjoy that uh, benefit. Um, oh, uh, TLD is .com, .net, or .org. They're uh, top-level domains. But what would... Yeah, those are the typical, those are the typical ones. But the key is to try and get the exact match in your URL of your root. So, you know, a lot of the times they'll go in and find the .com and the .net and .org already taken for most of the bigger keywords. And so that's where you can get some real benefit out of some of these other extensions that they have available. Yeah, because you're just throwing one in it every, uh, anyway. So, so ultimately, it's going to accomplish, accomplish the same thing for you. Um, hmm. Ben C. Uh, Jimmy, I think you do this yourself. Ben is saying, Jimmy, can you share where you get your GSA and PBN links? Well, I usually do my own GSA and PBN links. Um, I just got them from Greg. I usually don't you? bum some from Greg if yeah. I need them from occasion. Yeah, I know it's not, <laughs> not necessarily that satisfying an answer, guys. But but yeah, we, well, we all we all typically one way or the other get them from Greg either directly or or uh, or he shows us how to do it and then we just do it. Um, Jimmy, kind of unrelated, can an EMD method be used for Yelp rather than Amazon? Of course it can. Yeah, you, uh, yes. Yeah, this is interchangeable. I mean, probably the stuff that you got you saw on Stephen's webinar even, I mean, this could be the same principle, right? So yeah. when he was showing you the pictures, you could apply that TLD portion to the picture. It'll do the same, it'll do right. the same job. Right. So. Um, Ryan says, what's the best way to 301 a site to Amazon? Um, usually I just do it in the HT access, but I know you can get, you can get plugins for, uh, the WordPress. There's like WordPress plugins called like HT access or simple 301 redirect, uh, yeah. things like that you can use that you just can drop in the URL of your Amazon page that you want to direct it to. Okay, so. great. Uh, um, D uh, D uh, Liz, we've got some really awesome news. I, I don't know if you, uh, uh, already read it in the question box. It just came in from David Fripp. Did you see that? Uh, no, I didn't see it. I haven't seen the questions. Uh, we, we have a new uh, a new six-figure OMGer, first time. 
six figure. Wow. Con congratulations. That's exciting. It's really exciting, David. That's, that's wonderful. Um, we, we, we'd, uh, let me see if I can bring David live. I don't know if he's got a microphone to speak out on this. Always really great news. Hi, David. Uh, David, are you there? Let's find out if David's microphone works. Huh. And I'm not sure if David's microphone works or not. May not work. Um, so anyways, that's, uh, that, that's really, really exciting news. Maybe we can get a uh, little bit more uh, details from, uh, from David on the uh, uh, OMG Way Facebook group or the Amazon Facebook group or something like that. Uh, or you can mail it to me private. I, David, that's really a huge, huge milestone. I, I remember when David first uh, crossed five figures a month. It was just, just awesome. So that's very, very cool. Um, let's see. Peter says, so you're not focusing on ranking the EMD, just sending a variety of anchors that will help the Amazon page. Yet, P Peter, the, the EMD actually is getting ranked, but you're just 301 redirecting it. So you're going to do the same ranking method as from Greg's 2015 Over the Shoulder series. Uh, that's right there in your members area. Yeah, the best... The best way, I think, to explain what a 301 is to the new people is I, I consider like a 301 like a bridge. So like your link juice or traffic is going to travel from one over to the other. So I know some people ask that about like recovery. Some they'll just say, just do a 301. But what you're doing is driving that same traffic over the bridge to the next destination. So if it was a link-based penalty, it's going to drive across the bridge with it. You know, the bomb in the back seat or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, a bridge bridge is the best way to describe it. Great. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Uh, Peter says, uh, and then after the EMD uh, is 301, do you still send more anchors to make it rank for other keywords? Yeah, you could do that, Peter. That's fine. Patrick says, is the TLD that's 301 redirected set up like an MS? What does that mean? What is MS? Like a money site. Oh. Um, it doesn't have to be. Like, usually what I'll do, you know, because I try to give as much content. And so the same way I build out my 2.0s is the same way I build out these types of sites. So, um, you know, I just try to find the most relevant LSIs that there are, right? So we would build, like, three to five supporting pages of other keywords that might go along with the dog shampoo, right? And I'm sure, you know, when you're doing a research for Amazon, I'm sure you're finding other keywords that are like, oh man, wish we could go after that, but Amazon doesn't allow you to, you know, you gotta be really crafty on how you're doing your description and your title and stuff to get all those keywords in there. Either that or get creative with your reviews. <laughs> but, um, so, you know, I try to build out that content as well as supporting pages for this, um, for this exact match. So that way when you 301 it, all that relevance and all those different keywords all go over to the same destination. Beautiful. So it helps gives it a little bit bigger boost on a wide variety of keywords. Beautiful. And can you silo? Oh yeah, absolutely. I recommend siloing anytime you do anything. Okay. <laughs> Whether it's a backlink or a money site. Yeah, and, and, and if you can control it. Yeah, that's on your own page SEO area. And also, once again, that, that uh, those videos that I pointed everybody to with uh, Greg's partner, partner Martin, because Greg and Martin are really great at interlinking as well, so they know a lot about it. Um, so uh, when I was talking about keyword research earlier in, in the event, um, Ben says, "What is your percentage of links to your EMD? Percentage of naked, low anchor, low quality links? How many links?" Do you get to your EMD? The, ben, those, the, that's more just directly answered by Greg Morrison in your training. And that's where it's one of the kind of beautiful ways that OMG works together. Greg is just the man when it comes to uh, if you're going to be using, um, yeah, like, like if you want to know about anchor uh, percentage and so forth. Uh, unless you have, I mean, do, do you have a, an answer for that that's different, Jimmy? And you may. No, I think I think the way Greg teaches that with the exact match is perfect. I don't yeah, it's think it's exactly really perfect. Speed. Yeah, it's, that's exactly what you want to do. Is just make a beeline for this. It's kind of one of the profound things about OMG is we just have that 2015 over the shoulder series just sitting right there. Um, what types of URLs would uh, would you use in the some other URL bubble? Some other URL bubble. What was that? Oh no, the some other URL bubble was um, oh. that was a different lesson. 
So this would be, and you can find this in my DAS section if you want, when I go over the TLKT portion of how you set up the different 2.0s. Those are exactly the same thing that, I'll, that I'm using in this tactic because what I'm trying to find is the most relevant, not from a money perspective, um, it can be, sometimes they coincide, but from a link building perspective. So I like to build links and build content around things that are both highly scored in, in LSI, but also has potential of making money. So that way I'm not wasting either of them, I'm trying to combine them into one. And you can find that in the Dash training in uh, DC. Yeah, director's cut and it's also a breakthrough. Okay, awesome! Wow, that was that, that was super super dope. That was I mean that was just nuts. Uh, let's uh, head over to the uh, please head over to the NHB team uh, group Facebook thread. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, thanks so much. This is uh, was really fun for me. Actually, um, was really refreshing. Uh, I mean, a good refresher is what I mean. It's great. Yeah, you bet. Awesome. Um, okay, I'm going to uh, make myself the presenter, and at this point, we'll probably let me have a look at the. I, I know we usually try to keep these about two hours, but there we went a little over today because we had Jimmy kind of come in at the end, which was great. Um, okay, I'm going to make myself the presenter. Show my screen. All right, great. So people should be able to see my screen. Yep, is that correct? Okay, great. Um, okay, uh, Bruce has a great question. This is a terrific question. Um, Bruce Allen. Okay, um, Bruce says, doesn't sending a bunch of traffic to your Amazon listing page kill conversion? I'm missing uh, something in the equation. Keep in mind, I'm not very techy. So don't understand how this works. Be gentle, please. Absolutely, Bruce. It's a great question. Um, the uh, that that I actually kind of addressed this proactively when Liz was talking uh, about it earlier um, uh, about driving traffic earlier, um, and that's what we want to do um, when we're building out our SEO. It's going to be more efficient for a number of reasons. Is we really want to go for buyer keywords. Uh, so for uh, for example, um, you know, best is a really good one. Reviews is a really good one. Um, and uh, anyways, I pointed you to training inside of our OMG members area. I'll give you a refresher on, refresher on that really quick because these are going to really help you. And this is one of the things that's amazing about OMG. It's one, one of the reasons it's just easier to make money than ever because uh, so much of our stuff is just shockingly complimentary. Where, where uh, whoops. Um, okay, great. All right, so right here, I'm in the breakthrough members area. And as I'm scrolling down, as you get to your core free traffic training, then the two sections I pointed you to to really help you understand both buyer keywords and interlinking that we were just talking about earlier, actually. Um, we've got on site right here. And in your lesson two, in your second pillar, right here with Martin. This is with me and Martin, and this is awesome. This is awesome. Um, on page tactics with Martin, who's partnered with Greg Morrison at this point. And then also I would just very highly recommend, uh, and I think this could be like literally valuable for anybody on Amazon, regardless of what, either whether you're doing SEO is Alex Gould's training on affiliate keyword research right here. Um, cause he's selling physical products right and left all the time. So it's a great question, Bruce. If you're sale, if you're sending, uh, these buyer keywords over to your, um, to your listing, then it's you know it's great you know people are like I mean I do it all the time I buy off of uh, uh, Google Amazon myself all the time uh, I just did it actually earlier today because I was looking for a certain powder to go with that diet that Greg gave me and I just looked it up on um, uh, Google and the first Amazon one there that was there I clicked in and I bought it um, okay let me uh, let me have a look here and see so so the point is at that point your conversion percentage isn't isn't dipping right like it's, it's good and it's good outside traffic you're bringing in which is good um gary says the train with martin also in, in juggernaut i uh, i'm most certain that it is I'm, I'm most certain that it is okay um uh well i'm gonna start to, to wrap up here i, I want to thank everybody and i want to uh kind of point out um 
that we, um, you know, uh, it's an exciting time here with, with Liz and John opening up this mastermind. I want to talk about that a few minutes before we head out for the evening. So once again, that's at omgmachines.com slash Liz dash John dash mastermind dot PHP. And, uh, it's kind of funny when people don't know what they're doing in China, Jimmy, they can make mistakes. Um, J J Jimmy has, <laughs> has a client who went to China and like blew like some number, like, like how much money did they bl blow on like that inventory? 40,000. <laughs> how much did they make on it? Uh, zero. Do, do you think that was they the might, last time I knew? Yeah. Do you think they might've been better off going to, to listen? <laughs> to well, at least I got a free t-shirt out of it. They got me one of those Obama t-shirts. Oh, okay. That's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I, I went all the way to China and all I got was this, uh, this uh, t-shirt. Okay. Um, so what, what, uh, let's have a look at this. Uh, let's have a look at this page here. Um, I, r really though, it's, it's, it's just so mission critical understanding sourcing and, and even people, that otherwise have had some success with business can just walk in and really struggle if they don't know what they're doing. And that's really what you're getting here with Liz and John. I'm, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Liz and John to kind of give you final words of, about this. I don't know how much longer this will be up because I know that we, the sales have been very uh, much more brisk than we had originally expected. But, uh, you know, it, this is uh, this is neat stuff that's going on. It's a really exciting time to be alive. Uh, j just the fact that this opportunity even exists, I I'm excited for OMG because th this is going to be more. I mean, you see, you know, David Fripp just hurt, just hit that his first six figure month, and it's extraordinary. You know, I mean, you just go from somebody who um, is you know, just walking around, you just don't have this successful, thriving six figure per month business, and, and next thing you know, you've got it, and you got to be just puffing your chest up and like, oh man, you know, <laughs> I mean, this is just awesome. I mean, you're just in the game. Um, and, uh, and it, it's an awesome experience. And obviously, uh, if you're already in and you're uh, making substantial money, that's crazy not to get, uh, you know, if you're looking to go from six figures a month, to seven figures a month, um, or, you know, five figures a month, to six figure a month, then, then you know, absolute, absolute slam dunk. Um, I, I really put the word out. I, uh, you know, really staked my name to this. This is going to be an extraordinary event. It's going to be over the top. And, um, you know, with the train that they're going to get you, that's going to be in the field. Um, and you'll walk away with advantage you just never had before. Um, and, and the, the time you just spending time with, you know, Liz and John's uh, combined masterminds that are, you know, come, you know, kind of converging around this event, really rallying around it. And, um, you know, again, I, I just, you know, give this my, my utter, utter, um, you know, and, and anybody who even just wants to get on the phone with me and talk about this, I, I'm that excited about it. And again, I'm just not, uh, you know, not gaining any commission on this or anything like that. I just really want to see people have extraordinary success. I mean, I, 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 my self-interest is definitely involved because I want to see as my own gear just completely storm the castle with Amazon and just get in there and just just be looting the, the, the treasure vaults, stuff in their pockets uh, with Amazon Gold. And, and uh, so I really want to see that happen. And, uh, and also just the character, I mean, you know, we, we, you hear it again and again, uh, you know, they're, they're fun people to be around. They're extraordinary people to be around, uh, a type players all the way. Uh, I spent an absolute ton of time with Liz. Uh, I mean, just a ton of time with Liz at this point. And I just utterly vouch for her. She's incredible, incredible energy. Um, you know, her, uh, her smile is infectious. She's brilliant. Um, she's a great teacher, a great coach, John. Obviously, he's a legend. He's inspiring. Um, and he just has connections that other people just don't have. Boots on the ground experience. They both have incredible boots on the ground experience. And it's just, you know, it's going to be absolutely uh, an amazing event. And, and they just make, uh, you know, China just uh, so much more fun than it would have been otherwise. Um, so even though John says if you're, uh, you know, looking, you know, if you're looking to dance on the, the Great Wall or whatever, uh, you know, but, but I'll tell you, just time in the field with them or just, you know, at the bar after the event, you know, just kind of debriefing and talking over uh, you know, what you saw that day and, you know, uh, looking at product samples and, and discussing and wrapping and just being surrounded with, you know, six figure per month and even seven figure per month Amazon uh, sellers. I mean, that boy, that's that's the place that you want to be if you're trying to build your six figure per month or even seven figure per month Amazon business. I mean, that's that's you know, that's that's why it carries my, my absolute endorsement. 
And uh, so, I, John, do, do you have any uh, final words on, on today's event before we uh, wind things down? You know what, just that, um, you know, it's something we're very excited about, and like I said, it's also something we're very passionate about, because I know what this did for my business, and it was an incredible blessing to have this opportunity early on in my Amazon career to be around these amazing people and to learn these things, and to be in kind of like this intimate environment where people were open and sharing things that most people kind of keep close to the vest, they keep as a competitive edge. And those are the things we're going to be sharing. So th this will absolutely positively, if you're serious about your business, it'll make a difference in your business. There, there's no doubt in my mind. Uh, and Liz and I are going to make sure of that. That's a guarantee. I, I, I'd personally say, I mean, I just can't imagine that somebody who's in play won't um, at least 10 times their business. I just can't imagine how uh, you wouldn't. I mean, I really, I'll just say that right now. Uh, even if you're operating on a, a very big scale right now. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, definitely agree with John wholeheartedly. Um, uh, Liz, did you have any final words? Um, no, just like really what the main thing that I was hitting home with everybody is like video. If you're not doing video already, you really want to get into video and start doing that. It's really cheap. It's really effective and there's a lot of changes coming with it. Um, but still the opportunity is huge for the next year. So if you guys aren't doing video already, you certainly want to jump into there and just get, you know, just test it out. Um, I obviously still am not doing it right, but it's it's working out. And again, it goes back to the whole taking action. Just do something. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Doesn't matter what other people tell you. Uh, it's kind of like on the Periscope. You're always going to get haters that that are anywhere in life. There was one guy <laughs> that was actually I didn't tell you this, Mike, but one guy when they send hearts, he was actually sending uh, brown hearts, and he's like. Those are farts, not hearts. No. So you're always going to get haters. You're oh. always going to get people that are going to try to criticize you and things like that. Wow. But you just have to realize that you just have to get stuff done. I mean, that's the bottom yeah. line. As long as you're doing things, you're going to have a fair share of people that like you, and you're going to have a fair share of people that do not like you. So um, as long as you're taking action and doing things, and you're doing things to make the world a, a better place, so that's all that matters. Just have fun. Yeah, that's awesome. And take action. That's awesome. Yeah, and and, and you know, we we've been you know going on and on about this, but I you know uh, I'll put another plug in as well. Uh, by the way, for David Mills' most recent Law of Implication Office Hours, he really talked about this kind of underlying thing that that Liz is talking about with character and with with uh, you know, really having a personal image where you're uh, you know this A type player you know throughout your life and you know, of course in your personal life, but also in your business, in your Amazon business here, in this in this case where people just really feel great around you. And, uh, and of course, I, I know that there's a lot of people here already are A-type players and this event, we just have so many people having such extraordinary success. And and somebody else who's, who's coming along the road, hey, uh, you know, I came along, it, it took me a while, it took me a while to just be consistently uh, pleasant and, and uh, top performing in business, but it's, it's really, really worth it. And by the way, what's a great way to do it, what's a great shortcut, is to be around other just absolute A-type players and to experience them and to be uh, amongst them, rub rubbing shoulders with them, shoulder to shoulder with them. And that's what you're getting uh, with uh, with Liz and John's uh, China Mastermind. I, you know, I, I haven't in endorsed anything this, uh, you know, uh, nearly as hard as this uh, any event. I'm you know, really pushing this, up, you know, probably even harder in a sense than OMG Live, um, you know, because I really, really believe in the ability of this event to, to just really just change your life. I, I did it myself, kind of like an impromptu version of it with Liz. It was nuts. It was nuts for me. You heard from Ty. It was great for Ty. You know, uh, you know, you've heard from others. You heard from uh, Kevin and and uh, uh, you know last week and um, you know just individual after in, individual from from Max and you know vouching for and and you know cheering this event on and, and really rallying behind this whole thing. So I know it's going to be extraordinary for you. Uh, for those that jump in, and I'm really excited about it. Um, with that said, we've had a uh, we've had a great day. Uh, really appreciate everybody um, uh, you know, coming live on this event. This was a killer one. We came on and we talked a little bit about uh, assimilation live. We talked a little bit about Periscope, and uh, the reason why uh, was it's a great. Well, first of all, we were just sharing our experience with you because we care about you and you just want to spend time with you and so forth. But uh, but also it was just a great tech lesson and a great lesson in conversion, how that works. And we uh, moved over from there 
talked about the big Amazon update uh, uh, that, that, you know, some people were feeling like, hey, maybe this is a big deal or some other people, uh, when I say big update, what I mean is there was, you know, it was obviously big news over the weekend in the OMG Facebook group and Liz, uh, uh, Liz decked it out for you and you know, told you what was going on and what we're currently seeing where our data's at. And, uh, you know, we don't have to particularly be concerned about that. Then we talked about uh, extensively about especially YouTube pay-per-click traffic, what an incredible opportunity it is. Uh, we talked about keyword targeting for your, your more buyer type keywords. We pointed you to resources inside of OMG on that subject. And then we talked about China and uh, what the conditions were there, uh, including having you know just really boots on the ground information from Liz and John and also from Madsen on that, which is really terrific to understand that well. And uh, then we talked about Liz and John's incredible mastermind, which I uh, utterly recommend. And then finally, we closed out with uh, with Jimmy coming on and just just uh, you know some hashtag uh, 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 Rebel SEO stuff. It was re really really cool, and I uh, just glad to have that. I actually may um, kind of uh, cut that out and, and stick that somewhere in your members area because um, it's really really helpful. A lesson we've been wanting to get to you. So uh, I, I had a lot of fun. I hope you had a lot of fun. Um, and uh, once again, by the way, the other big news is huge news today. Uh, you know, big, big ups to David Fripp on his huge uh, success. Actually, I want to jump over. Uh, kind of last thing I want to do, always really happy to celebrate an earnings report, is go over to the Amazon, oh, let's see, Amazon Mastermind community. Let's go over to the OMG NHB team Facebook group. And congratulations to David Fripp. There he is. Six figures, hashtag six figs. That's awesome. That's awesome, David. I know everyone's happy for you uh, since I uh, saw your last round support and, and now you're uh, really ramping up. That's awesome. All right, so thanks everybody for your success. Uh, first six of your uh, month for, for David Fripp. Thanks for everyone for coming live on this event. Also, thanks for uh, Ty for uh, jumping on and chiming in. We had a great time in Chicago, a great event. And, uh, and finally, remember, uh, the URL is omgmachines.com slash live uh, slash liz dash on dash mastermind dot php to join Liz and to join John and to join the whole uh, the whole incredible uh, pre-assembled mastermind that's going to be there. Uh, you know, live boots on the ground in China and it's going to be extraordinary stuff. So thanks, everybody. This is an incredible event, as always. Really, really appreciate you. And we will see you next time. God bless. Hello.